what up and welcome to a podcast with Mo. I am Mo featuring Skinny 5000. What up, what up, what up? And Snappy. It's back again. Snap, 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 snap. The classic crew. Um, yeah, classic. the last episode we did two episodes ago, uh, very good. It's one of our best. Uh, not saying we'll hit it th- this time, but y'all go back and listen to that one if you think this one falls short. Um, also, I need to shout out our Patreon first thing. I mean, we have a Patreon. People don't know what that is. That's this website you can go to and get money and get early access to all these episodes. Uh, you can get access to special secret shows, bonus shows. We put three out last month, total of extra content. Probably too much. People are hit saying, hey, y'all put out just too many hours worth of shit. We can't listen to it all. So maybe we'll <laughs> slow, slow it down back, <laughs> slow it down a little bit. But um, anyway, I'm trying to give y'all your money's worth. You know, $5 a month to get access to all this secret shit. Uh, think about it. Uh, if you give enough, you can be a co-producer like my mother. It's your boy H2, who has a new website. I need to remember to put it in starting this episode. It is flatlinermusic.com. So that's where you can now go to check out his stuff. Um, also, we got a Forgotten One. Brad's Direx and Graveyard Entertainment. Chia, chia. All of our uh, patrons. Talked to my mom yesterday. I went and saw my far- my parents. And uh, these guys, I mentioned them last time. Uh, I went to where you guys said I went and smoked weed with these right. guys that like sell these barns or whatever. And they got given all this weed as a bonus or some shit. And so anyway, they're the homies and they have recently bought the bar in Warica because the guy that was running the bar was doing illegal gambling machines. And then he got caught. Someone ratted him out because they lost a lot of money on him, and then he couldn't pay the fine. So instead of paying the fines, my friends bought this bar Hell yeah. to help him pay off the fines. Now they have the bar. And um, my mom claims they were asked her if they're like, do you listen to the podcast? Cause we all listen to the podcast. So shout out down back bar. If they're listening to the podcast, <laughs> <Hell> um, <yeah. laughs> but my mom said, I told him I didn't, I go, well, I'm glad. Cause I'm telling you, I go, I really don't know, but I've at the moment, I just fuck. I go, the things I've said are outrageous. So don't, but if you have, it's too late. So it is what it is. Um, we got good feedback. We're positive. <laughs> well, I tried to go down that road, tell my mom not to listen to it, but then, you know, I, yeah. I, I wake up to receive hateful <laughs> messages. So. Yeah. You tell them don't. They will. <laughs> listen to the well, podcast. you know, the devil's over there hanging out in that podcast. I thought that'd be enough to keep her out. But right. No. Yeah, I mean, you're just <laughs> opening up your heart to the Satan like, by listening to this. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Also, uh, Real quick, I'm going to play... We have these little drops. I don't know how I'm normally going to do them. Mm-hmm. I play them at the very end of the last episode, but Graveyard Entertainment, we got two homies from Graveyard that sent us a little drop. So we play like on a radio station, and oh. I plan on doing like at the end of a song, but one specifically, Big Kent, wanted to shout out uh, Snappy and how Snappy's the best part of the podcast and his favorite. Hell yeah. And so we'll play the drop from Big Kent uh, just because oh. this one we do. Appreciate that. Hell yeah. Hey, what's up? This Big Kent, a.k.a. DeMarco Dip Graveyard Representative. What's up with a podcast to the mo? Damn, fuck that up. But- <laughs> All right, hey, look, just keep going. I'm going to stick to him here. <laughs> what are they? A podcast with mo. Yep. It's my shit to ride to. Y'all need to ride to the same thing. Graveyard, we out of here. Uh, so shout out Big Ken Hell Graveyard. Yeah, that shit dope. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah. He was all into it. Then he's like, I saw his shit. <laughs> I know. I thought about cleaning it up, but it was way funnier uh, with the A podcast to the Mo or whatever. Like, yeah, that is funny. It fits our stuff yeah, it's better. better. So anyway, shout them out. And also Playboy Sense one as well. We'll play that one next week. Now, I'll try to keep these little tags. We'll figure out how to. Hell yeah. You know, anyone can uh, make their own little skit, send it in. You know, we'll play that shit if they're funny enough. Um, in last week's episode, you know, again, last week's episode, I would say I shot Brad and Soko. They're coming along. I'm not, I mean, they were never bad, but I felt like last week's episode was the first one. I was like, they felt like real podcasters, right? right. Like they felt comfortable. <laughs> they felt like they were used to it. Um, it. I have to spend a significant more time editing there is because Brad refuses to wear headphones and then he, there's just an echo of my voice and all of his shit that I have to go in and cut out. And then Soko, for some reason, we have just a huge delay. So like I stop asking a question and there's like three seconds and then he talks. So I'm just going in and cutting all that. So it takes a long time, but I think it turned out pretty good. Hell yeah. So shout, that. shout those guys out as well. You know, making podcasts around here. Yeah. yeah. Um, y'all have uh, anything pressing, anything super interesting you'll have to get out before we get to a song oh i had allergic reaction i got stung by something where i swelled up got highs and shit and got a like a steroid shot in my ass I don't you know, know what it got stung by i don't know it stung through my glove i was moving brush at work 
and it stung to my glove and shit. My hand got really hot. Well, I fucking freaked the fuck out right. the first time it ever happened. <laughs> that's probably if your hand got hot, I would. That's probably a bee. Probably. I've been, I've been stung by bees all the time at work and shit. Oh, never I got attacked that? like last year by eight, nine, ten of them. Yeah, see, I've been stung by a lot of stuff. I actually just told Koopy yesterday, <laughs> and I told her, I go, I know this is, I shouldn't say this. I'm gonna jinx myself to be stung by something. And I said, but as a kid, I got stung by bees a couple times. I got stung by a whole bunch of wasp all at once. Me and my friend hit a broom on a right. rug that was full of them and they all attacked us and just tore us up and i was like but i do think i could take one right now and it wouldn't be that big of a deal right, right? like i think as an adult i mean it was just a big deal because i was a kid she goes i don't know you know like, so, uh, one wasp for bees things are all right but you know when you get a whole yeah. gang of them like i got eaten by like 40 of them once so yeah it's a, the one when I, we got attacked i got like three but they're all on my collarbone it was like one right after the other it was crazy it was such a random get your spot neck. I'm yeah a vampire. they were at my neck well, that's the first time i ever got a fucking story with shot i get a shot in the ass <laughs> like, oh uh, yeah the last time i got a shot in the ass uh from steroids <laughs> is when i was in college and it was when i first started dating Coopy. i don't even know if we're dating when i just been talking at the time but i got a vacuum cleaner from my aunt betty also snappy's aunt uh she just has a bunch of shit so i needed a vacuum cleaner and they gave me one i go to vacuum it's full and i go to empty it so the dirt wasn't even from my house it was just from something i don't even know what it was from and i go to empty it, and i guess i inhaled it and I was like, I'm so hot. Like, everything's real hot. And I went mm-hmm. to the bathroom and looked, and I had, like, um, like the Batman mask of white where my eyes were. Like, that was white, but all the rest of my face was red. And I was like, what's going on? And I took off my shirt, and I watched a line go down my body of just red, just yeah. overtaking everything. And I was like, I started freaking out. Yeah, that's what it did, man. And uh, I called Koopy. I was like, I need you to take me to the nurse. And so I went to the nurse station on campus. And they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And they, yeah, they just gave me steroid shots. And then they told me I had to go take Zyrtec or something. Yeah. And then I went to look at the Zyrtec, and it was too I couldn't afford it. And I was like, well, I'm just not taking the Zyrtec. Right. I was to say, was you on anabolic? Or? <laughs> I was like, shit. Man. It was, um, freak out, though. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's it's a weird feeling because uh, you do feel like it's like it's in my body. <laughs> like, what can I do? All swallowed up, bigger lips and shit. So then my lips are even bigger. <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Yeah, I mean, remember when, <laughs> DSS, it, remember when uh, John Gruden got fired from the Raiders and it was because in his emails he was calling people rubber lips. Yeah, and I was like, I never heard of that as like a racial term before. That's and people were one. like, that old racial term rubber lips. I'm like, I don't know if anyone. <laughs> I've thing? never heard this. So, it, so interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Rubber. <laughs> I mean, maybe that. W- I mean, maybe before us, like back in the fifties, maybe it was like a real common term or something. In, but I never area, heard it. Probably the area. It's still right. slang around there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's start off with a song here. It's gonna be from our homegirl Karma. Motherfucking yeah. Karma. Uh, me and her last week. Two weeks ago, when you all hear this, I think it is, uh, put out a new song. So go check that one as well called Not Me. Uh, It's very good. And uh, this is one of her new ones called Free featuring Low Key. Ooh, free that shit. Hey, Carmen, we can be free, Low Key. No longer weighing me down I'm elevating off of the ground A problem don't make me, it just make me learn something I ain't know, yeah, yeah, yeah Just like a fake, can't break me, it's gonna make me hurt But I can't lose focus, yeah, 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 yeah Put me on the top, 
now I think I'm free for a little Free, 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 free Free of overthinking, free of myself and my thoughts I'm ripping off shackles, I've been a slave to this darkness, right? Subliminal madness in my brain make for the hardest rhymes My pen in the pad, sword and shield, problems, targets It was funny, watch my demons try to catch me when they fall behind In the apartment, I was stuck just like a dead end Trust falling snakes, cause I had thought they were my brethren Den of thieves, why the hell I ever lay a bed here? Send me to sleep permanently, I'm just better dead here Visions of a king, it's all clear that my sight's clouded Stay busy feeling fear that my mind's drowning But I'm steady yelling cheers, cup of ice crown yeah get my life bound to all these right options see now i grip a mic over wine bottles or an rx script you know i'm fine doctor don't need no rx yeah to know that i'm popping put the darkness in it and watch it slap out it yeah a problem don't make me it just make me learn something i know yeah 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 just like a fake can't break me it's gonna make me hurt but i can't lose focus yeah 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 Help me up the top now Karma, GG, uh. featuring Loki. Oh yeah, with free. Mm -hmm. Some jelly for your toast. I like it. Mm. Karma's it. always a delight. <laughs> She's one of our favorites, or at least one of my personal favorites. So, <laughs> you know, get out of here with that. She's just a good singer. I, I really like it. Right. Yeah, get in there with it. Uh, well, you know, we, we don't we don't see eye to eye well, on that. And here's the thing. Taken. <laughs> All Skitty did was laugh. He wasn't saying anything, and you're the one that made the crazy comment before the song. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we didn't put the words in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, tripping, yeah, the, Me and Skitty no. speak another language, all right? <laughs> Let's see. Um, yes. Well, fun times. Yeah, Karma is cool. Uh, we have, like I said, a song that came out a week ago or so, and then she's going to be on my next album with the fellas, the Hell ABCs yeah. uh, album that we are working music wise it's really coming together i'm really showing off my google drive skills like i could be a pretty good secretary all the mm -hmm. fellas are like man you're so good at google drive and i'm like yeah i know man Ooh, i'm uh, i know how to work. change font colors and shit you know uh, make it look all cool but uh, we're working on it cj we got him motivated he is for sure gonna at least be on it because uh, he sent something he already had in the works that i'm excited what? about so i get to jump oh, on shit. and uh, so it's all coming together slowly but surely maybe sometime by the end of this year but I got to figure out some um, solo shit, yeah, you know, as well. Effect. It's all, mm. it's always something with the music. Um, let's see this last weekend. Uh, I guess last weekend, I would say it was my anniversary weekend. It was the first time we haven't done anything really because we have uh, this house shit later this year. And we're like, we should save money for that and not do anything. But of course we did. We went to see the movies uh, and saw this Wes Anderson movie called Asteroid City that fucking sucked ass. It was so Never horrible. <laughs> uh, Wes Anderson, people know, he's like, uh, he's like the fantastic Mr. Fox and Rushmore and uh, everything. If you've seen his movies, he has a very certain style, like Life Aquatica. And I don't know. It's just like, it's weird. It's like those weird kid oh, movies, God, you know? I don't know. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and there's some that I do like. Like, she loves the Royal Tenenbaum. It's one of her favorite movies. And he did that uh, directed that so anyway I, was, I saw it was coming out I was like hey we need to go see this of course our movie theater doesn't have it because we only showed fucking superhero movies here that's it that is all I show superhero movies and Pixar period right. they don't get anything else every time my movie I want to see comes out I look it up never comes here so uh, anyway we drive all the way to fucking Moore to the Warren Theater that has been hit by tornadoes I think multiple times but it's this big massive theater that's way too expensive but it looks real cool when you're in it you do feel like a kid you're like oh I remember when movies were fucking cool like this <laughs> and then uh, but anyway as we're going in pulling into fucking Norman tornadoes are coming to like we're in goddamn thunder season we didn't realize uh, this was happening and I'm like oh we're driving to the fucking place that all the tornadoes hit like more yeah. Oklahoma is where the tornadoes hit yeah, and like, I'm like why are we this is crazy I, I sat comfortably at Ada during storm season like, know, in the too. town of Ada like I said it's shaped like a toy bow. They do not hit inside the town of Ada. They've hit like one time in the history. It's ridiculous. They come to Ada and then they bounce off to the surrounding communities, go around Highway 3W and 1. Right. And that's, they do it every time. But more, 
On the other hand, oh no. It's like one of those hit cities of all time. Right. More and then what? Long grow long grow is pretty bad too. Yeah, more gets a lot, but more gets a lot of big ones. Yeah. They like they get ones that like destroy a whole neighborhood and shit. <laughs> and then yeah, it's good time. So anyway, we did that and then of course like me and Kubi really like the movies and popcorn experience. You know, like that's so, like we had a big popcorn, big drink, you know. I don't give a yeah, fuck about dollars. spending the money and all that shit. <laughs> don't give a fuck to me. This is about the experience. And I we always really enjoy the movies. And Soko mentioned this the last time he called in, I believe, or two times ago, of how nowadays you have to like choose your seat when you're buying your ticket. And I, that's happened at ours for a long time. But we get there, of course, you got to choose your seat. And it, what I don't like about it is I like being to eyeball the people in there, right? It's more than just who's sitting where. It's like, well, I don't want to say yeah. about certain types of people. So anyway, uh, <laughs> we choose our seats where they're finally sit there. Everything's great. And then all of a sudden, this guy, right before the f- preview started, a guy walks in just talking loud as fuck to his wife, girlfriend, whoever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah. Blah, blah. And I'm like, why is this guy? So well, I'm sure he'll sit down and shut the fuck up, right? White guy, big beard, uh, hip- hipster-ish look, you know? <laughs> and uh, when the previews are going, he comments out loud about every preview. Oh, it looks real good. I can't wait to see when that one comes out. <laughs> like, like, we're all, can, like, shut everyone can up. hear every single word. Like, not even just, like, a little bit, like, it's not like he's projecting it. Like he has like theater, like he's wants to make sure everyone's hearing him. And I get to where I'm laughing because all I can see are things as being awkward. And so every time he does it, I just go <clears throat> like, and I'm trying to make it more awkward, I guess, by laughing at him. Cause like to me, that's even funnier. Yeah. But then we're like, well, surely once the movie starts, they won't talk during the movie. And they ever like, just a scene would open, right? Like you don't, there's no dialogue yet. It's just like the scene and they'll go <laughs> like this weird <laughs> fake laugh. And I was like, what is going on? Like I was losing it. <laughs> and then not to mention the movie was horrible. Like it was one of the worst movies I think I've ever seen in theaters. It was supposed to be a play that they turn into a movie, but then at some point in time, it's like they go off the set and it's a plague. And you're like, oh, it's trying to like break the fourth wall. It's just trying to be too weird, right? Ooh. And too smart. And then when they have this, like an alien comes down and then the alien looks like the worst CGI you've ever seen. But I think that's supposed to be part of it. And then you're like, I, it looks like a South Park thing. <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't work. I was like, this thing is horrible. So Man. anyway, it was a weird experience at the movies. But we still had fun with all those, like the whole way back. We well, just got to make fun of That'll be a people. memory on one right. of your anniversary. But hey, remember when Toe had that one fucking goofy bastard? Yeah. I mean, I would have had fun with that. Like, had that shit continued, you know me, because I get accused <laughs> of being loud every fucking where right. I go. So... I look at that as an opportunity to have a little extra fun. I'll be honest. I <laughs> fantasize. Didn't I fantasize about saying something like really like assholey to him? Like, holy shit. After he like done it the fifth time. Yeah. Like, I wish I could have been that guy that would have like <laughs> called it out. Everyone else in the theater been like, thank you person for saying something. But I could. I just laughed every time imagining like, man, I wish I could say something to this fucking. I totally would have. But then my wife would have got pissed. And that's usually how it works. I usually. <laughs> I usually just don't go out in public unless like like a special event for them. Because man. well, right. I can't be if I man. see dumb people. I, I I gotta call it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they're if it's affecting me and like I have to deal with it, just because you want to be loud and fucking stupid in public. Well, let's be loud and stupid in public together then, and I'm gonna win. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's, I get it. <laughs> I mean, that's your challenge. that's your arena. Challenge yeah. accepted. I feel you. Let's get it on. Yeah, that's like asking Mike Coxon to a street fight or something. You know. <laughs> Um, don't want to like do that. Good, sounds like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> ding ding. Oh yeah, that's, that's good shit. So anyway, that was the last weekend for me, and uh, we didn't eat anywhere because we ate so much popcorn. You know, <laughs> we we're like, well, we're so full on popcorn, we don't need to eat anywhere. But then the next day, we went to. Sa- I haven't went to Santa Fe Steakhouse in years, right? I don't know why. Just last time I went, and something yeah. sucked, and I was like, I'm never going back. And so we went there. I was like, it'll be okay. And I just got a chicken fried steak because how can you mess that up, right? And it, and then I wouldn't say they mess it up. It was <laughs> edible. But yeah, I was like, God kidding. damn, this sucks. <laughs> like, well, this, this fucking food sucks everywhere. Well, like bro. the few restaurants we do have in Ada, you know, the Applebee's, the Chili's, the Santa Fe with their chain restaurants, and they've all been on a steady decline for years. <laughs> I think they're just getting shitty um, ingredients. For like when I, I went to Bill's Catfish, which is like this famous catfish place in my hometown or whatever. I not like famous, like everyone in the state. A lot of old rich people in the state drive hours to go there, and like Toby Keith comes by and stops there, and everyone in town gets it's a text not message. That and, good, it's okay, right? And it's always it is to me. This house, if you can just walk in and eat, it's very good. If you have to wait an hour like you normally have to, it is not worth it. 
Right. And normally it's like just you have to wait forever. And so we go there yesterday. Well, first I'll say we drive all the way to Temple, your old home stomping grounds for a year or so, because there's apparently some steakhouse in Temple that's one of the best in the state. And Temple is like a little uh, black town, got a class B, like 80 percent black population or something like that. And so it was really surprising. Someone say, oh, yeah, they have one of the best steakhouses in Oklahoma there. So we're going there. And we we're like, all right, cool. We were pretty excited about it. And we drive over there. They don't open until five o'clock at night. And I was like, what? And it was like three when we got there. And so we're like, your school teachers run a restaurant. No, it's Saturday. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Every that. other day they open at like 10 a.m. Huh. On Saturdays, they open at 5 p.m. Mm. And I was like, this is cra- it, it yeah, was strange to me. It was strange to me. <laughs> so uh, well, then we drive from Temple all the way back to Warica to go to Bill's Catfish. So I was starving. And even then, at first, like, oh, these hush puppies aren't quite what I remember. Something's a little off, but then I overheard a waitress tell the table that the company they used to buy their hush puppies from no longer exist, and they have to buy these ones that kind of look like them, Bro, but they're from a different company. Whip up some batter and shoot that shit in the fryer. You make a hush puppy. I agree. Well, I got your <laughs> restaurant. Easier. Don't pre-order the hush puppies. <laughs> that taints the. But at least uh. I, I was like, so I originally was like, well, something was that off. Makes a and then whenever we got, I got catfish and shrimp. Shrimp was the same as it's always been. It was good. Uh, but the catfish was just really thin. Like they're trying to cut it just a little thinner so they can get more out of it. And then that's everything in a piece of cat. I don't know, it was just really thin. And I was like, I don't know. This thing was really thin. It made me think of my kids and wife got me, uh, they asked me what I wanted for Father's Day. And I was like, man, I want some fucking good chef knives. You know, I've, been, cool, put, yeah. I've been putting it off, putting it off. They got me a fairly expensive set. It's mean, it decent, you know. It's the next step up. It ain't top of the line, but it ain't bottom. Like a keto. I've been going through it. I found one last night. It was a fucking long, skinny blade. And that motherfucker. Everything a knife should be. Hell like, yeah. I was just sitting there flaying these chicken breasts open without any struggles. I was like, holy shit, this is the best goddamn knife I've ever had. Yeah, my knives are all dull as fuck. Because well, the first couple, I was just like, eh. They're sharp on the end, but not really kind of what you expect a new set to be i was right. just like well you know that that's a fact that but they feel shit. good and everything but th- i finally got the one hell yeah yeah so i used to watch all yeah. we, see we grew up oh. i guess just because we used to have cable tv or <laughs> antenna or whatever we watched so many infomercials or i did yeah like you would just for an hour be watching fucking here's this new knife set here's the chopper really good. here's yeah. the rotisserie set it and forget it you know <laughs> All that <laughs> shit. <laughs> and then the George Foreman grill just dominated to where, like, no more other gadgets. That was it. It was done yeah, after that. Yeah, so the Aikido the, the, brand the of knives is pretty good. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's good to know. I'm, I need some eventually. I'm sure. My for wife sure. already had her side on them, so, you know. Yeah. Be out of your. If it's a household item, I mean, it's already prefabbed of what I'm going to like. <laughs> right. I've just accepted it. It's, <laughs> it works better. It's so much easier. Actually, I get more free time doing it my wife's way. Just whatever she's got on her chore list, knock that shit out, and I fucking got the rest of the day free. It's fucking amazing. Hell yeah. Hell okay. yeah. <laughs> Hell, my boys are so good, they do have my chores where I get home. It's fucking great. Hell yeah. And we That's why do you have a kid, I guess, to do well, chores? We ought, no, fuck that. Do not do not use that. I mean, they will help do chores, but you don't <laughs> thank them do nothing but chores. Fuck that. No, you gotta learn. You know, you that's, that's what's wrong with these kids today. They ain't getting forced to do chores. That's what's wrong with me. That's all I ever did. Wrong with your the man. What are you talking about? You are the, that's what you. That's what made you awesome. For all the joys. You are the dude, man. I just try to navigate through uh Take it as it comes. I feel you. Listen, I have like, which is weird. I think I really feel like I should have been a stand up comedian. Like I think it's too late now. Or I mean, it's probably not too. Late. I could probably like really work on it. Drive to Oklahoma City every weekend and try to like oh, put in the hours and stuff. But every time I hear stand up comedians like talk about like their personal feelings and shit of just how they feel, I'm like, God damn, I have like they're like hate like people like the most successful <laughs> people are like I hate myself. I can't look like and I'm like I just I get it. I get that. like people are like I'm the worst and I'm just like man these are just my people. So <laughs> I think I fucked up. Well, the most doing of them put music. on an act. I usually just be myself. So let's go. There you go. Uh, just some yeah, snappy. just snapping along. Yeah, just snap along. That should be your first album. I like the mows you're about. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll play another song, and then we'll get into the how the world's fucking blowing up this week. Or it's actually two weeks ago from when you're hearing this, but it's this week for us. Um, all right, next song we're playing is going to be from new friend of the podcast. I think this is the third time in a row we've played him. Uh, goes by the name of Jay Byrne. Jay Byrne. And the name of the song is Go. Let's go. Burn it. Go time. i 
full of whack Honest to my crap Hip hop got ripped off I want it back Making beats and writing raps Do the mix to make it slap Smoking weed and making cash See how long I make it last I'm on top and I'm unstoppable My success and my demise Are equally unprobable Only problem is that I got eyes And you're so obvious Only time I move is when it's optimal The love and hate they optional but me doing my thing like no one else, man, that's just logical Me being a clone of someone else, that's just impossible Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Me doing my thing like no one else, man, that's just logical And me being a clone of someone else, that's just impossible Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Go, 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 go He's so despicable, rhyme straight up and edible Turning bows to vegetables, brain hemorrhage like exit wounds Something like professional hit, man be ready in the instant This incense turns starters into benchmen You couldn't keep up with my henchmen Turn live men to dead men End them like a sentence All with my pen hand Turn them to remembrance All with my pen hand Watch me as I get it I'ma turn into a legend Me doing my thing like no one else Man, that's just logical Me being a clone of someone else That's just impossible Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Me doing my thing like no one else, man, that's just logical And me being a clone of someone else, that's just impossible Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Nice to see ya, homie, but you know I got to go Go, 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 go Go, 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 go! I dig it <laughs> by Jay <Vibe>. Byrne. <laughs> like, damn, it's in my, it's with my vibe too. It's like, wait, wait, it ride with the shroomies. Like, yeah, it's perfect, Roddy. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I would say I would turn the vo- vocals. I know it's too late now, but that's my only thought about it. But it did sound cool. I like the bass a lot. Uh, nice. Good vibes. It's nice and smooth. You go. Be feeling. Uh, I like it. So I don't know if we have more from Jay Byrne or not. I know he sent us a few when he did. Um, if not, send us more. G-g-g-g. And anybody, if you want to send us music, it's a podcastmo at gmail.com. If it's mixed decently well, I will add it to the list. That's more or less the, the gist. The gist and jams. Of all of that. Um, all right. So a lot of shit mm-hmm. has happened in the world. Uh, okay. I actually haven't added to the notes for this episode in many days because I felt like it was already really full. And I just added to the next episode's notes. <laughs> but all kinds of shit's happening. And so by the time this comes out, who knows what has changed like probably the whole world will be different it seems like we're in one of these moments where it's like all over the world shit's fucking on fire and revolting <laughs> and riots and who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow sort of thing right but the first thing i had on my list i thought was pretty interesting um was and i'll even write doing the order i wrote it down the pentagon had an accounting error of 6.2 billion dollars where they just couldn't figure out where the 6.2 billion dollars went so i wrote that on the list or i call on here and be like how the fuck you lose 6.2 billion dollars right and then they're gonna just like sweep it under the rug like who cares obviously they fucking did something crazy with that fucking money and then so that's what i was gonna say but then what happened was the next day uh, in the Ukraine slash Russia, the Wagner Group, which is a Russian mercenary group led by this. I don't know the guy's name, but I do know that he used to be Vladimir Putin's personal chef. And he has gotten promoted until he uh, he runs a mercenary army. Hell OK, yeah. of like old Russian men. And so they've actually I think all the, they've done all the successful things in this uh, versus Ukraine so far. So I think the Russian armies aren't really doing well, but the Wagner group's pretty good. So anyway, yes. Wagner group, the day after the six point two billion dollars turned up missing, they turned on Russia. 
and they started marching towards Moscow because they said Russia is corrupt and now they're going to overtake Russia. And then all of the news was it's a military coup in Russia, civil war in Russia. Hell yeah. And then all of a sudden it came out like, wait a minute, did the CIA pay them $6.2 billion to turn on Russia? And that was just our $6 billion of money well spent, you know, from that sort of, because it was from the Pentagon. It makes sense. And then uh, they get to Moscow, this Wagner group, and then they just make peace. So now everyone's saying the check cleared. Basically, the CIA paid these guys $6 billion, check cleared. And then they said, all right, Putin, we got the money. And they said, all right, we're friends again. And then they just kept all of our yeah, money. They just, they just hustled the U.S. at a straight up fucking hustle. Yeah, Who just mind. got owned? Yeah. And it sucks because that's our money. Like as someone who pays taxes, that's hey, my money. That could be our student loan. Yeah, I relief. want it now. Exactly. That's student Fucking loan relief money right there. That's why everything hit nope. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um and well, I'm sure that's somewhere in my notes too. If I could see a loan shit got fucked. Actually, I don't think I've any of this Supreme Court shit in here, even though all that stuff did just happen. Um I mean, I know I hate it because you states. know it happened to America, but when a loophole fucking fucks the government you can't help but fucking grin a little because they be fucking us all the time with these right. loopholes well the way i talk i was talking to kubi about everything i go it just feels like we're living in the middle of these things that will become conspiracy theories in a few years and i just think it's fun to be aware of it now and you can point it out and then everyone's like whatever crazy ass i'm like i think in a couple years we're all gonna agree that's totally what happened on that pace in a couple years every time some conspiracy comes out they're gonna say heard it on the simpsons and a podcast from mo right underneath yeah that's true I mean, you know, we've well, we've uh um, man there was one thing Whoa. that i said i said like months ago on here and then i just saw like a major person like a really famous person on a podcast say it and i was like there's no way i influenced it but what if right what if like we started it here and it like started right, it here it first yeah like, we can track we just shit. had a smaller <laughs> platform exactly uh if only we could yeah trace all these things so anyway the russia ukraine shit's crazy i mean it seems pretty obvious uh well something uh rfk jr who's now the the man right he's like the p everyone likes him these days well they do and they don't we'll get into more of that later i'm sure uh but he basically a- had this speech where he was saying like, when we first went there was about a humanitarian effort to save these certain ukrainian people or blah 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 right and he goes but now we're saying well, we have to win because that beats russia and that's what we need to do and he goes it just all ch-. like everything changes they move the goal post to where it's like well now the goal's this and now we got to do that and you're like well that's not why y'all said we were going there originally we were going oh, there because these that. one people were being killed in this one region <laughs> we're gonna go protect them and now all of a sudden we're sending them fucking tanks so they can go into their country and you're like well that's Sounds not like military shit it's yeah. not the military words. hey we will be doing something now so i know what you're doing oh, this is what you're doing now okay whatever right yeah and the, la, la, la. and the soldiers um <laughs> fucking just doing all y'all fucking, fucking 50 <laughs> lower asvab scoring dudes are like sure whatever <laughs> right on in that bitch <laughs> whatever you tell me sir <laughs> oh go this way i actually saw a, a video this week about the new army boot camp so like the way they now train drill sergeants it's all different basically the way i'm sure skinny went through where you're getting yelled at Yo, more and yeah. shit <laughs> uh they try to the kids nowadays can't handle that. They will quit. Oh, yeah. I mean, they just will. And uh, so now it's like more of an encouraging method. And honestly, when I watched it, I said, oh, I would have joined that army. Or if I had a football coach like these guys, it would have met like help my person. But they're not even football coach standards. No, no, they're like, so like, say you, you fell like running right and you or you can't do the push ups. It's instead of like yelling at you a piece of shit. It's like, Hey, we have a lot, right? You have so much potential. We need to make sure you're ready to defend our freedom. Like it's, That's it's from like this, like positive spin, right? Like, like, <laughs> you know, we know you're strong enough to do this. You got to push through yourself. That like, doesn't get my adrenaline going. That isn't going to help me finish the push up. I mean, yelling at me, is going to piss me off see, and I get just, adrenaline I mean, going. For y'all, I think so. Like I remember in football, if a coach yelled at me in a negative way, I just was like, well, fuck you and your team. I'll just quit. <laughs> and so like, I do think I would have that same attitude in yeah, the army. Coach yelling at you and shit but they always come in love on you and shit no, see, afterwards I, and shit nah they rarely did I think I needed a coach like pull me to the side and be like you're my special guy you know I might yell at you <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, we're good they cry with you like coaches don't need coaches like man you know it's understood I hated how like man, fuck you, much coach. potential they oh, saw in me you, I hated it Not yeah funny. most of the coaches I had uh, couldn't coach today like yeah. dang so yeah, if you grab a phone you <laughs> we'll see what that does with our army you know I don't know if it even matters. I think a lot of we're going to be in mechs and drones and robot fights. Best people at video games are going to win the future wars, I think. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it will come down to hand to hand combat. But I think technology wise, we're trying to we got fucking UFOs in the sky. We're right. <laughs> I mean, we'll see what happens. The good old boys are out of here. Now it's time for the UFO. Now it's time for the UFOs to play. This is the nerds world now. <laughs> Get used to it. Um, 
All right, let's see what else happened in the world. Uh, France is burning. So it's they're not really talking about on the mainstream news at the moment, which is interesting. Uh, for a couple of days, they weren't. They've I've seen a couple people like on so on <laughs> the internet burning. say or whatever. But I, I guess the cops shot some dude who was running away from him in France, and so then they led to these huge riots. Right? That's what I, that's what one side's saying. The other side is saying they've let in nine percent of their population are now Muslim immigrants who don't respect France and their policies, and. They are running wild in France and still in Congress, and they've like lost control, right? Like, and the police can't handle it. And apparently, some guy that tried to stop these protests I was like, Hey, guys, what's going on? They fucking chopped off his hands in the middle of the street, like it's fucking Afghanistan <laughs> shit. So, I was like, Holy shit, off with his hands and in the middle of fucking Paris, bro. So, it is wild. I mean, maybe you, we, should, we, check, maybe you should check people before they come in your country. Yeah, maybe there shouldn't be open borders. I mean, I'll be honest, I've always said open borders, who cares? But this is a moment where I'm like, Well, <laughs> if you don't have the police force to handle it maybe maybe that is a bad idea you know in some way but i've always been like that's a subject that could have been done better on both sides right <laughs> i mean i still think there needs to be somewhat checks but i don't know well right, there has to be you some way to figure run wild because fucking people aren't good at the end of the day right just well not. in all these european countries are, i think we mentioned last week the week before there uh, some Syrian refugee in france stabbed some kids on a playground just because he hated oh, white yeah. people or some shit like it, I don't know if it was the shit. other way, if like a white guy ran up and stabbed some Syrian refugees because he hated Syrian people, it would be crime. all over the right. So <laughs> it is interesting um, how it's all going. Um, also Ooh. saw th- this kind of touches it, and then we'll try to play a song because I can't be too much, can't get too deep in this shit. Uh, there was an Antifa guy, right? You know, Antifa, the, the guys dressing all black, they're like the liberal uh protesters that are like Mm -hmm. fuck the man we're gonna throw bricks through shit or whatever i don't know (laughs) they're anti-fascist which is good anti-fascism i think is a good idea but i don't know about their methods so anyway during this they got into it with some proud boy types which is more code for like the conservative guys at protest (laughs) and um they kind of got into a scuffle and pulled this dude's face down or like mask off. Mm -hmm. And then like, so two guys were unmasked. They took pictures, post them up. Everyone's like, these are cops. I mean, these are clearly CIA guys that were cops that were trying to get in the CIA or FBI or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they haven't had a presence in a couple of years, but they're clearly, that's what they're a part of. And this is clearly Antifa is the CIA or FBI. It's not liberal fuck, which makes sense. How many liberal guys, you know, a fucking military gear up and go to any protest. It never made sense in the fucking first place. They're not built like that. I mean, that's just not how they work normally. No. And so <laughs> basically everyone's like, how are y'all not seeing this? And it's crazy that they internet sleuths have figured this out. And not once has that been mentioned on the news yet. January 6th protesters, all people in a crowd, they'll get like blasted on the news all the time. So just interesting. Uh, and again, I hate it because I want to hate the conservatives and like the liberals because that's how I grew up. Into but these it, days, <laughs> you into it, it, uh, it just sw- switches up on me. So I'm diving in there. I'm swimming in a deep. <laughs> I got, I mean, it's more, intense. it is more fun to be aware, but as uh, my wife, like something, there's nothing we can do. And so it kind of makes her like, well, who cares? I'm like, I get that. But it's also like, I kind of want to know when it's all going down, you know, of like, Hey, I think this is what caused it. So if I if I make it to 80 or whatever, probably won't. I can tell the kid, you know, my my all my she thems and 37 (laughs) gendered grandchildren. Not that I would have it because I don't have kids uh, about the fucking world back when there were two or something. You know, (laughs) could we start adopting motherfuckers? I don't know. (laughs) Anything's happening. Yeah, that's true. I also think I could be a robot. And when everyone's robot people, genders won't matter because you're Mm. a robot person. Yeah, I don't care. I'm just in a robot <laughs> body. Bust your ass. <laughs> yeah. And then you can swap, put it in whatever you want. You know, figure out whatever experience Ooh, you need. Attachment. Exactly. Yeah. Finally, I'll know what it had to have a big dick. <laughs> yeah. And a pussy. I'll try both, of course. I go deep in there. Still exit only, though, on the other, you know. Uh, gotta be. <laughs> Even in robot world. Uh, in the, only in the, robot. the way it was meant to be. <laughs> right. Only um, for charging. No, I guess this is sound intent because I push it there. It's kind of tied to this. Uh, people are trying to push cisgender is now being a slur. And I think it's very funny. I think like I understand if a lot of people are going to be like, that's insensitive or whatever. And these people are being uh, they're not being serious. But like so basically like this, the conservative side are saying, if you call me cisgender, I'm going to punch you in the face. That's the equivalent of you calling me an N word if I was black. Will you explain that one to me? 
Uh, yeah. So basically, the conservatives are mad that the transgender people have to have come up I with didn't the know term what cisgender. Yeah, cisgender is opposite of trans. Just means what well, you are. The fact you're a man and you identify as a man makes you cisgender. So they would call you a cisgender man. And then you would go, well, I'm just a man. And they go, how dare you hate on me and my trans? Are you transphobic? And you're like, what are you talking about? And you're like, you're cisgender. And if you don't believe that, you're transphobic. No, you can go believe whatever you want. I'm fucking going to mosey on about my goddamn day. If you got a problem with me, then you're the one that has the issue. A lot of people would agree with you out there. But that's the basic push at the moment from the right. They're trying to say, if you call me cisgender, that's a slur. Mm. And so the same way. And then people go, but it's not. It's just a definition means blah, blah, blah. And then they'll say, well, white Southerners could have said the N word was just a definition for whatever. But black people get to decide what's offensive to them. So guess what? Cisgender people get to decide if it's offensive <laughs> the same the saying. same way a trans person gets to decide what's offensive to them like you use a certain term they're like that's offensive you don't get to go well i didn't mean it that way so in the same way they're trying to i guess take I that, that same happened. logic and go well if you call me cisgender i find that offensive and if they argue they go you don't get to decide what's offensive i do because it's offending it me sounds like they yeah, put in dude said like hey have you have a good day sir that is wrong. You don't say that. That is rude. Like what? So they're trying to <laughs> snowflake the snowflakes because this is what's happened on both the Get conservative the and liberal side. I like to consider myself in the middle. I'm sure people listen and disagree. Whatever side you're on, you think I'm on the other. But basically, every side tries to out snowflake the other side while calling the other side snowflakes. They cancel shit oh, while call, while claiming that you shouldn't be canceling like, shit. They're it's offended all... by me not being offended. Kind of. Like they really work themselves up to try to get offended to because I'm not offended about what I should have. They want me to be offended about. Yeah, it, I don't give a fuck. If they call me cisgender. I'm going to fucking chuckle and go about my day because it means zero to me. Zero. I mean, if someone calls me cisgender, I wouldn't care I'm at all. I'm going to laugh and keep on going. Like but fucking it's kind dumbass. of like another thing similar to this is if you put pronouns in your social media bio. Bio. So for I don't, and so a lot of people would think I'm conservative. Just because I don't have he, him in my Twitter bio. <laughs> but I'm like, you see me. I, I don't know. I don't feel like it's necessary. <laughs> I'm like, I have a beard and shit. Like, of course I'm a man. But I know that's offensive to people, but that's how I feel about it. I'm sorry. So. If they say they, them, I might start looking around for the other people. Like, really? right. And that's the thing is, I honestly could, if, right. if they, them wasn't taken by people that say it means you're no gender, if it meant you had multiple personalities, I could probably fit into it. I have moments where I feel like I'm multiple people, and I would understand that, but they don't mean that. They don't mean right. multiple people. Right. They mean no gender, which I'm like, well, I don't know. Well, I hear they, them. I start looking for other people, and I can't help it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm a little tacky about it. We got those uh, grammar books in elementary school, mm-hmm. and we would have got marked off if you put right. they, <laughs> they, them on some shit. You know? That's not the King James English. Yeah. They just, <laughs> it's really how you grew up. I mean, I, I know it's crazy because, again, I'm so pro like all gay rights. You know, like it doesn't bother me at all. Anytime someone's like, gay people should do this. I'm like, I agree 100%. But it is, I guess, because the trans thing just so new that sometimes it's hard to wrap my head around it. And also, gay people, I think it's all about who they want to have sex with. And I, and I could, I understand that. I just understand the idea of who you want to have sex with. I get that concept. The concept of like inside my body, I feel like I'm the other gender. I go, what's the other gender mean? Like no one even knows because any gender could be what you can be whatever the fuck you want. Right. And so like, it's just hard for me to con- conceptualize it. And so then I just get in these weird uh, thought bubbles, if you will. <laughs> so I would explain it. Put a finger in my ass. <laughs> yeah. That was skinny. That was skinny. <laughs> Everyone knows who wants the finger in their ass. You don't have to let them know. Uh, just making sure. Everyone knows. This. Everyone I'm knows. I'm still on the exit. Yeah. I, I feel you. All right. Let's play another song. Whoever plays here, you're about the good spot, I say. Uh, good spot. <laughs> it's your boy, H2. It's your boy. Again, yeah. his new website, flatlinermusic.com, I believe. He sent it to yeah. me. And I, I haven't looked. I think that's it. I'll yeah, make sure to put the link um, in this description like, of the podcast. Yeah, and uh, the name of this song is Thunder. Thunder Clap. Hmm, perfect for Oklahoma. <laughs> Eight of the moment makes beats. 
First time I had a wet dream, I came in to check on a boat Was a redhead on the waterbed that didn't even float Don't know how much I can know, my shyness was hard to cope With ferocious for the most part of my early life I could draw but not as good as my friend, so I gave up that device Learning how to write rhymes completely changed my life Feels like that I died twice, but it might be more than that How many times I've been shot in my dreams, I can't even add Different places, different settings, different people that are constantly forgetting Guess they think I'm lying when I write, but I always recite They can't even remember what they ate Last night I paid the ultimate price Let magic in the kitchen Created friction and pushed me to suicide It's 2020 and COVID's on the rise Everybody buying cleaning supplies so of course I use Ajax When it comes to my demise Completely red from the sun But couldn't hide my eyes When I write it leaves a stain Like I'm leaking from my brain And all the blood sits in my palm I knew something was wrong And needed a lucky charm Cause I didn't had too many dogs Die in my arms When I write it leaves a stain Like I'm leaking from my brain And all the blood sits in my palm I knew something was wrong and needed a lucky charm Cause I done had too many dogs die in my arms I laid on that bed puking on myself thinking I would die in my right ear I heard a game being played and it's been over 10 years since I watched the NBA You got something to say? I wipe my ass with every NDA I was sent here to fucking empty cage and blow them all away Cause I don't need the cake, I say what I wanna say Fix that bitch James Spader, California on the way In the night moves for the right moves to make this planet quake Slicker than Quaker State, baby I need a break Cause paranoia had me snapping my neck Turning on the people I was supposed to protect Whether it was for a check or in my head I still had no regrets, what would you do if everything was telling you that everything you ever knew was really all just a net And if you follow in her faith, you could bring somebody back How would you react? Shit, I wasn't even scared I care too much for that When I write it leaves a stain like I'm leaking from my brain And all the blood sits in my palm I knew something was wrong and needed a lucky charm Cause I done had too many dogs die in my arms When I write it leaves a stain like I'm leaking from my brain And all the blood sits in my palm I knew something was wrong and needed a lucky charm Cause I done had too many dogs die in my arms And wasn't even sure how it worked But I knew something had happened as soon as my body jerked For what it's worth, it's the greatest choice I ever made Now the whole world responds to everything I say And it's even cooler now, it's in my own kind of way Yeah, I know I was clay Molded by a ghost that knew the truth was on the way Needed a boost when my tradition blew up And my intrepid went down I was stuck to rob me, brought me back into town Him and his friend Adam, it sounds even cooler now I just wish I hadn't crushed it But back then I was too asleep They even feel disgusted And yeah, you trusted in me To keep you on the right path I was too focused on ass Playing with cats And ended up with a big mouth bass But now I'm teaching the class And learning the ropes And it's gonna be a royal rumble When they learn about the GOAT No, I'm not here to gloat But they should find out who Hope is Since we know she can float And most of the time now It's all connected to dope They make a clean getaway With no way you can quote Yeah, I'm on a tangent Holding the mic No spandex Need I say more? More X, about this fucking score X, bitch, I'm Theodore X, singing with 20 quartets, a Vietnam War vets, no more threats ahead, so if you got something to text, misspell that shit, time to roar with the best. When I write, it leaves a stain like I'm leaking from my brain, and all the blood sits in my palm. I knew something was wrong, and needed a lucky charm, cause I done had too many dogs die in my arms. When I write, it leaves a stain like I'm leaking from my brain, and all the blood sits in my palm. I knew something was wrong and needed a lucky charm Cause I done had too many dogs die in my arms It's your boy H2 It's the boy, it's the boy, fuck yeah, hell yeah Fucking with my head, yes With thunder Mmm um, I feel the thunder. I like that one. I believe that is off uh, Hidden Hand. It is not on the normal streaming site. You gotta go to his website, flatlinermusic.com okay. or dot net or whatever. Yeah, I end up figuring out it is. Shit. And uh, yeah, you know that exclusive shit. And you can also hear it, of course, on this podcast. So just repeat, rewind. He listen over it again. Uh, we'll take it. And um, yeah, I like what he does. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago on these type of beats. I like the ones I've seen that are like real chill, kind of real mm-hmm. simple, because then he can do like a lot more. But he goes great, you know, raps all fast. I don't and know shit. what the fuck was going on with it. <laughs> he had 20 quartets of Vietnam vets, bro. And um, <laughs> that's. Oh, I did it. So shout out, it's your boy H2. Yeah. Um, I recently, just speaking of H2, 
and it leaked something in my brain memory, if you will. Oh. Uh, he was always talking about numbers and shit, right? He's always like, mm. it's the numbers and it's the whatever, the Jewish the number, number of this word. And I never understood what he was saying. And I still don't quite get what he was saying, to be honest. But this is what he's saying. But I saw a video that was trying to explain that concept in its basic form. And it's like, uh, so in the Torah, which is like the original Bible, basically, it's like the Jewish version. Uh, each word is numbered as in when it appears. So like the first word is number with the first word. And like for their so like their words are ordered like in their dictionary. Like the people buy in the order they appear <laughs> in the Torah. And so each word has assigned a number. And then so people think these old ancient like Leonardo uh, da Vinci people like that like they would use these numbers and then put certain words together so when you added up the or use numbers so oh. like so there's some sort of code system between those two things right and so once I saw this video I was like oh I get it a little bit but I also don't think that like to me I just saw the, the number 23 which was this movie with Jim Carrey where it's okay. like once you start looking at numbers you just get obsessed and it's going to kind of ruin your life that's how I felt was the like the gist of that movie so um I'm like, I wouldn't get obsessed with it, but I at least get it more now, H2, on the numbers. So um, I at least understand where the origin comes from. I never even understood God, that part. So Bring it all in. <laughs> you know, it's the evil Jews, obviously. <laughs> uh, I also saw a thing today, uh, some old documentary. And again, I hate being like this because I don't want to be anti-Semitic or anything, uh, but I do think old conspiracies are interesting, and most of them do tie back to the Jews, <laughs> it seems. And... Um, <laughs> It was about World War One, and I don't know. I've never known much about World War One. I. I know how it started with the assassination right. of Ferdinand, whatever, and uh, of Hungary, uh, and Ferdinand all that, Bull. all that <laughs> dumb shit. But according to this old historian guy, um, Germany had won World War Two after two years. They basically had everyone beat or whatever. And this isn't the Nazis. This is pre-Nazi. The Nazis did not exist here. Right? It was like twenty years previous, and uh, they had won. And then the Zionists, as this thing calls it, which would just be the Jews, right? Zion. The Zionists <laughs> went to England and told them if they uh, if they can guarantee that they'll take Palestine and give them Israel, then they can get America into the war, and then America will like swing the battle right and then y'all will win and that's exactly what happened as uh, America got involved in the war that side beat Germany and then they took Palestine gave it to Israel made the Israel nation to the Zionists I mean like that is I mean, just history of what happened right and so I'm like oh that's interesting it's fucking great right now yeah that's pretty interesting uh and you know the black Jews had their whole culture stolen so uh, don't forget and I'm starting to learn just more about them. You know, there's I've learned there's different tribes and uh you know about about people. Yeah. The Jews are interesting. I, and I think it's always thought like if I could choose what to be, I wish I was Jewish. I think they seem funny and cool. Like they're always cool in the movies and shit. Um I know some people want to kill you just because of who you are, so maybe that would suck. But you know, I've never thought negative of them um myself. But I do think these conspiracies are interesting. Not that they're and I, I don't even think that's a bad, like, a group of people are like, we want our own country. Hey, I think we could help make some deals to make this happen. Like, that's all that happened. I'm not saying it was evil. It was just, that's what they did. And, um, get the money to do it. <laughs> so, but it makes sense where, like, in World War II, Hitler says, hey, the Jews did it. They're the reason we lost World War I. Like, it makes sense how he convinced the people that if that, if he just used that line of logic, <laughs> I don't know. Damn. Uh, I think he did too much math and fucking went crazy and he couldn't stand those fucking. Uh, the black Americans outrunning those Nazis. He just couldn't get it. If they were the, the superior race, how is this happening? Yeah. Uh, I think they should do an, a movie about that. That would be a great movie, right? Of like, is it Jesse Owen? I don't remember who the name of the guys were that went to Germany. They went to Germany, racing against the Nazis okay. and won, you know? Yeah. And so, I mean, that'd be a great movie. Just like if we're going to like make all the minority movies, I want to see that one. Yeah. Like, I want to see methed out fucking Hitler like piss, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> busting it out. Yeah. Last time I saw Hitler in a movie was fucking little Nicky. It was a long time so <laughs> since we've seen him portrayed. Um, speak, bastards. Also speaking of movies, and this guy could be in this movie while I'm mentioning hypothetically is John Majors. Now, John Majors is one of my dudes. If I make a top five actors list, he is like might be up there. I've been thinking about it, but it's be hard to do because there's so many actors. John Majors, you'll know, is a. Uh, most recently, it was in the Creed movies. He was like the guy that uh, Michael B. Jordan fought in, the, in Creed three. Right, right. uh, I think he's also in these Marvel movies as like the new big bad guy. But I don't watch those comic movies, so I don't know. But anyway, John Majors, my dude, he's in a lot of t a couple of TV shows I really liked as well. But he got uh, his life kind of got yeah domestic <laughs> abuse charges on him or whatever, and everyone's like he's done. We're kicking him out of Hollywood and shit. But then the court ha case happened. Turned out 
They said he was innocent. Now, I don't know the extent, but either way, and no one talking about him being innocent. You know, every fucking all they talked about when it happened was how he yeah, was an evil person. That's how it always happened. But in the, it's just like the same. You know, someone accuses a college athlete of rape or whatever. And and then until proven guilty is just a feel good story. It doesn't actually. It doesn't exist. No, right. they, they slander your shit. At least not for a black I mean, You man. get accused, you get cuffs put on you. <laughs> Exactly. How is that fair? Innocent until proven guilty. That is not. Yeah, they're like, hey, sit in this jail cell unless you have money. Oh, we'll give you time back. Well, when y'all, one person decides, you know, yeah, whatever mm-hmm. they're going to the, do. The bail system, uh, I highly encourage people to look up the John Oliver Last Week Tonight segment on the bail system. He describes it perfectly, whether or not will. But basically, it is. It's if you're rich, you don't have to sit in jail until your court date. And if you're not, you have to sit in jail until your court. I mean, that's all there is to it. So if you have enough money, you will yeah. never have to sit in jail to your court date. And if you don't, you will have to always sit in jail to your court. Like, and so it is like a complete two tier system, you know. I mean, I think they should only be able to hold you like we've said before if it's a like a felony. Yeah, or violent. Quit crime, fucking so. shooting people for misdemeanors. I'm with you on that. You know, yeah. like cops stop shooting people for running away. It's a goddamn misdemeanor. Stop it. See, I do. I've stop always agreed it. with that. I think that's what's fun is just as you do a podcast, you lean both. What you go back and forth, you know. Because I think I've gotten more towards your side of it over the time. Like, for instance, people say if you can steal something up to a thousand dollars, they can't stop you because it's not worth shooting a person for a thousand for month or whatever, right? Mm. And you're like, but if there's no fear of that then people are just going to rob all the time. And then the, what happens in these like communities, uh, a lot of them are urban communities, targets and Walmart are like, we're just shutting the store down. We're not going to get robbed down. every fucking week. <laughs> Thousands of dollars worth of shit. And then the cops are going to say, well, it's under a thousand dollars. So we're not going to do anything like, Oh no, you can stop them, fight them, swing on them. Just don't shoot them and kill them. <laughs> yeah. That might be the key. I oh, mean, <laughs> fucking throw a rope around them. You got them balls with a string. <laughs> yeah. You see in the fucking, I ain't fucking wind it up and fucking swing it at their heels. Yeah. Fucking last hole them bitches. That was in some video game, but yeah, something like well, that. I mean, it's yeah. in the fucking movies. I watched it. I don't know what right. era it is. I don't know what they're called, but I know what it's exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, like kind of like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like, like a hair tie with marbles on it. Give me, a, <laughs> give me a blanket and a wiffle ball bat, and it'll be like a trident and fucking sheath thing. They throw. or just a trident. <laughs> Goddamn, I'll make anything work. I mean, they ain't trying to kill. All right, Aquaman over here. Snappy will wrestle any shoplifter. Just well, fucking fuck. them up if they pay enough. You know, loss prevention snap. Oh no, to stick a bubble gum. Go about your day, man. Right. Give me a piece, though, motherfucker. No, man, that's my Madden. I ain't even got that copy. Right. <laughs> um. Also, somewhat celebrity. If y'all remember many moons ago, uh, there was this FTX story, which was like the cryptocurrency people, and there was this guy who stole millions and billions of dollars from all the celebrities and the people, and he was a little fucking weird, nerdy looking motherfucker. Ah. And it was like the biggest news story in the world for like a week, and they're like. They had no accountants. They had like six nerds in a house just fucking all day, just taking everybody's money. Anyway, companies called FTX. Really they went under. Guy was uh, going to go to jail forever, you know, all this stuff. But he, I'd said back then as well, he had donated a lot of money to the Democratic Party. And the number two in the company donated a lot to the Republican Party. Like, a, like most of the money donated to this last election campaign was from them. I believe like more than anyone else. So of course those charges all got dropped this last week and uh, no one's talking about it really. You know, I saw this one little news story, but it's just interesting how of course it did, it, bro. you know? <laughs> so anyway, shout out SBF. Let's see what he does next uh, in his cryptocurrency world. I still, I still never bought in the crypto that hard. I still have some, I just haven't checked it in like a year because it ain't doing nothing. I don't think I'm glad I never got into NFTs though. That is something I just never took the bot yeah, on. See, never seen, and, um, <laughs> never seen interesting. <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand what owning like digital art was about. I understood crypto was you trying to play some weird stock market, but they claim it's not it. It's actually about real currency, but no, it wasn't. It was all about everybody trying to play some weird. Can I buy in here and sell out or <laughs> later? That's what it was everyone was doing even now i got the new ones are trying to pop up that's the whole goal is they try to convince people to get excited spend their money it's kind of like i was up. watching this betting thing if the line starts you know where they're a 12 point favorite and they can't win by 12 well fucking five million dollars gets bet on that and the line goes down to about four right i mean so yeah you can adjust the line yeah uh, these big betters and, they, and that's kind of what they're doing you know they're yeah, they say uh, these guys go to some country where it's midnight first or, you know, where they can put bets earlier. And so, like, these rich guys will put a bet there that they know they're going to lose. 
but they do a big one early because that fluctuates. The earlier you do it, the more it fluctuates the line. So they'll they'll get the bet they want to get Vegas time, or when, like when it hits them or something. And you're like, it's yeah. just in, it's interesting the way a lot of crazy shit goes in this gambling shit. Mm. Way more than I understand. That shit's badass sounding. <laughs> yeah, I uh, want that kind of money. It's some alpha like brain that. shit for sure. <laughs> I've always wanted to download the sports betting app. I don't know if Oklahoma allows it yet or not, but I've wanted to get into it. Because I do care. I like some basketball games. I'm like, I know who would win it. I know, you know, you like feel like you know, but I feel like as soon as you do, you're going to get like into some shit. So I don't want to go there. In the years I've been in Ada, I've ran across at least two sports bookies that I don't know, may or may not have talked to them a little bit. Right. You know, but uh, I met a couple over the years. I mean, it's a, you know, like I said, you got to fucking cover the lines and fucking know what you're betting on. Otherwise, you could fucking think, think you win and still owe money because you didn't look at the line right. Right. See, like, I mean, it's tricky. And the man. only reason I know is because I've listened to Bill Simmons' podcast for about, I don't know, 10 years now. And every Monday after football Sunday, they'd go over all the lines for the next week and talk. So I have a general understanding right. of all the terminology and how it all works. So that's what I'm like, I could but i just don't watch football enough now to do it but basketball if like i watch enough mm-hmm. but they're also a guy can get injured in a basketball game when it's all right well that ain't happening <laughs> they bet on the but, coin toss that's true they don't know all kinds of shit it's yeah, a 50 totally. 50 shot i mean right and then you don't even get a 50 50 odd it's right. more payout of like 48 right you know instead of the 50 um so they'll fuck you but it's, it's good time um all right let's play a song you know I uh, feel like we we should get to that. And when we get back, we'll do a segment. I don't know which segment. We'll do a segment when we get back. I'll Ooh, figure we'll it out. Jingle. I know. We haven't played a jingle <laughs> in a long the time. Fucking jingle. Uh, that's what we need. So anyway, the next song is going to be from a new... I keep seeing newish friend. I would say he's he's an all-the-way friend of the podcast. Yeah, all the way days. in now, motherfucker. Uh, Grant Ford. Um, and so I'm going to shout him out. I really like this yeah. guy these days. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned on a bonus show, or maybe just with SoCo, I was like... He might be someone we could get to call in. He seems like because he's around our age, has general interest. Uh, but maybe that's wishful thinking. You know, I ain't tr- I'm trying to keep this kind of a close knit bunch in a way as Bring well. Them in. Bring them so we'll in. see. Um, anyway, the name of this song is "Goddamn Am I." It's not what I'm about to say. I was gonna say "Goddamn My Pim and Chip's <laughs> Small," but that's not the name of the song. It is Bad song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can break my heart, featuring Theta. So check it out. Heartbroken. <laughs> God damn, you could break my heart. <laughs> Y'all niggas, but I am heaven sent. God body plus God body that equals elegance. Married to my muses, music shit is the evidence. Whew. Woke up early on them, something I usually do. Got the rooster lit, another split, that's what I call a face to face. Fuck with mine and we might just have to invade the place. Lil Luffy acting goofy, end up getting clapped like Ace. One piece, hoping that I make it in one piece. Goals got a nigga digesting word to my munchies. Tropicana rolled in this swisher, you get the picture. If you eat as good as I smoke, then I'm fucking with ya. Need a long been at my side, she's down to ride. Extended clips, I inserted into this horny bitch. Got me wishing a nigga would left right clicking it like the switch up. Throw your fucking hands in the air, this is a stick up. Throw your hands in the air, this is a stick up Keep your hands high, start waving them side to side All my people to the front, to the left, to the right Get the fuck back, hands in the air, this is a stick up Throw your hands in the air, this is a stick up Keep your hands high, start waving them side to side All my people to the front, to the left, to the right Get the fuck back, hands in the air, this is a stick up he said, make history before you go. Foresight to grant my wish, foot is through the door. Of course, making claims saying that you woke. Pajamas on, rental burning, can't see through the smoke. Don't choke, swallow two of these and call me back. Y'all niggas ain't sick, you fucking hypochondriacs. Missing as a youngin' was looking clean with Tommy dreams of a power scheme. 
Lucky St. Patrick. Now old school pushing 47 and 7 at the bar scene, and I keep one in the chamber. So my 40s pushing 14. Tough pretending niggas, you not mean. I mean, I guess you kinda are. Y'all shit is average, like Barney Stinson. I'm accepting any challenge. I'll rescue you, cowboys, and scalp you. I'm a savage, or run up in your house, guns drawn. Had real low, never done this, but the fam is starving, so. Throw your hands in the air, this is a stick up. Keep your hands high, start waving them side to side. All my people to the front, to the left, to the right. Get the fuck back. Hands in the air, this is a stick up. Throw your hands in the air, this is a stick up. Keep your hands high, start waving them side to side. All my people to the front, to the left, to the right. Get the fuck back. Hands in the air, this is a stick up. Grant for yeah, <laughs> featuring Theta. Uh huh. You can break my heart. Break my heart. <laughs> Produced by Strong Maurice. Strong fucking. Maurice. Now some behind the scenes. I already <laughs> talked about this for ten fucking minutes, and we just lost. We it. We had a really good fucking segment, man. And we lost it. So uh, I'm just gonna have to tell y'all what it was like. So if you know Tenacious D song tribute, it's like that. I can't redo it, but I can kind of tell y'all what happened. Basically, I explained how me and Strong Maurice saw each other for five fucking years. I thought we were gonna grow together as these uh, this rapper producer uh, fucking combo and be friends forever. And he hasn't hit me up in forever. I don't have real beef with him, but uh, there are things that have happened that made me think maybe he has beef with me. But probably not. I think he's just very successful on lo-fi Spotify, just making fucking hits and shit. And uh, that was more I or less. Should be that. There. And they should be me too, damn it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, shout out Strong Maurice. Well, He'll never hear this. Somehow we got to talking about failed podcast players we have. Mr. Play a Click come up. Yeah, and then I mentioned uh, people I should listen to. <laughs> Uh, people we have beef with in the past and we talked about Mr. Play a Click um, who was the first person we had beef with on this podcast and uh, it was one of Snappy's co-workers who had shitty music and we played it and then he bought us fake plays and we got mad and it was weird and I said but shout out J-Mac Skinny's cousin for fighting him at work and so J-Mac had our back and then we just based about J-Mac was a wild card he's a wild motherfucker always accidentally punching people because he don't throw jabs he throws haymaker hooks and that's more or less gets us caught up but it was like way better I so know. you're just gonna have to imagine how that good greatness. it was because <laughs> we all have our own personal J-Mac stories <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's getting obviously the best I, I, I mean I hired that motherfucker at Mazio's it was the toughest <laughs> trying to get him to drive I know driving my fucking vehicle too man. oh my god and then we had some school orders them schools fucking ended up canceling until I got a new driver <laughs> for real like they was like you can't send that motherfucker back over here oh, that's so good <laughs> that so... my system beating and shit <laughs> that is awesome um, alright so we talked about some boxing like J-Mac and I was like well that leads us perfect to our next segment let's play the jingle looked over noticed it wasn't recording for some reason so uh we'll try that again <laughs> play the jingle you got the oh, what's happening in sports what's happening in sports uh, I'm trades Right, NBA has lots of trades oh, uh, yeah. and, and free, trades. free agent moves, if you will. So Chris Paul got traded around to where he's now in the Warriors. Uh, Draymond's going back to the Warriors, so that's more or less their team. Um, the Lakers, I think, resigned Austin Reeves and yeah. Rory Hachimura. Their guys, I don't think they've got anybody a big trade yet. Uh, Russell Westbrook's going back to the Clippers on a two-year, $7 million deal, which all of a sudden I think makes him a great value. When he was making $37 million a year or whatever, yeah, that was a horrible deal. But now he's making fucking $4 million a year or something. It's a lot different than the salary cap and all that. Um, it seems like when their salaries more fit what the team needs, they play better. That's just my theory. Well, I think he's going to try to pull off the two-year turn his career around and try to do another big deal yeah. somewhere. Chances are. But, uh, and he's made a lot of money already. So maybe yeah. he's like, well, fuck it. Let's just see what happens. Um, came, Tom Brady was always taking pay cuts. Yeah, he was all in until he went to, you know, left the Patriots. Um, a lot of other trades have happened. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. I didn't write them down necessarily. Um, Bradley Bill went to the Suns and then the Suns also 
fuck, I thought they got a fourth one. Or there's a, there's talk that they may get another guy and like trade DeAndre Ayton for somebody. Um, oh, Kyrie Irving Kyrie, yeah, at the moment was. has signed with the Mavericks, but people think he might. It might be like a sign and trade sort of thing. What is Kyrie's deal? Because I follow from a background on basketball. I don't really watch. Like, he come out, was supposed to be the super stud, and then, like, he's kind of good, but don't really play, or he's a drama queen, or I... I um, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, I'm sure it don't sound worth it. To I'm me. sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see it as bad as most people. Like, I think most people in the media are against him in a way because I think he the same way they were against Russell Westbrook because he's not friendly with the media. Like, he's not giving them the interviews they want. He's not behind the scenes. And not love Marshawn Lynch for it. Now, I think um, Kyrie used to be more like that back when he was doing like the Uncle Drew movie and he was on Cleveland. He had a little different persona. He was trying to be clean cut and shit. I think he's a little more hippie. I think they also they don't test for weed anymore. So like Kevin Durant's the biggest pothead in the NBA and everyone knows that Kyrie's probably up there. Chances are because mm-hmm. uh, they're buddies. And uh, I think he got in some weird conspiracy shit, which I don't want to judge at all. That's all I can talk about on this podcast. Yeah. Right. And so like friends, when he got uh, suspended from the NBA earlier with the Nets, all he did was share a link to a movie he watched called From Hebrews to Negroes that was about how the Hebrew or the Jews stole the real Jews. So, which I'll get, I don't know if that's real, but I just think you could share a video. That shouldn't have got you that's suspended. That's like a history trying So then to for educate, people huh? to use that against him to be like, well, yeah, that's on him. And I'm like, I guess, but how is he supposed to know he's going to get fucking suspended? Well, I, it I don't know. Because it had the word Negro. And then and before that, don't understand. he wouldn't take the vaccine. And so that's why mm-hmm. he didn't play. And so people were against him for that. But now all the fucking facts come out. None of us should have took the vaccine. So, um, <laughs> I mean, even like the CDC is like, it's worse for you and shit. So like, you're more likely to get COVID if you had the vaccine than if you never got it or some shit. So I think he was been proven right on that. So I do think he is annoying to a lot of people because he's probably like smartest guy in the room personality and he's a basketball savant. Like he is probably the best dribbler of all time that's played in the game. Maybe uh, that and one dude who made it, maybe he was up there because he played in one, you know, uh, skipped to Malou oh, or whatever. Professor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hot sauce. No, that, that wasn't hot. It was skipped to Malou, I think. So I made the, it. Oh, the NBA. Uh, and they made the NBA team. Okay, yeah, so I'm yeah, saying like something right like that. that, maybe that guy. But in the NBA, Kyrie probably is better even than like, yeah, he is so good at dribbling. I mean, he's so, and he's so short. He barely dunks. It's all layups and like crafty. Like he is really good. But also, I don't think he checks in all the time, you know. But for like Dallas, the reason Dallas signs him to that deal is because if they let him go for nothing, then they get nothing. You know, like the way the salary caps work, you can go over the limit as long as it's a guy you had before. And you sign him in this right order, right? So, like, yeah. for Dallas, it makes sense to sign him. If they trade him later, then they at least have the asset versus, like, them just letting him walk. Now, a lot of people do hate Kyrie, but I think he is good. And he is the reason LeBron got that ring in Cleveland. I mean, he's the one that hit the big fucking shot that won the yeah. fucking first ring. In, or the one that, so, I mean, that is a big part of it. So, Well, yeah, a lot of people are like, you know, Chris Paul here, Chris Paul. There are all these good point guards, and they're really good. But they're going to have to get more of a Derek Fisher mentality if they want to fucking play with the big boys and win a championship. Derek Fisher was the perfect curl back in the right. day. Right. Very few. There's I been mean, a couple. Isaiah right, Thomas he, is probably the best point guard to win, like MVP of the finals. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's very yeah, rare. Isaiah Thomas was my favorite growing up. Yeah. Detroit. I mean, that's who I'm talking about. The okay. new one didn't ever go to the yeah, finals. Yeah, sorry. He was, I didn't know where he went. <laughs> yeah, he got fucked over by Boston. But I don't know. Kyrie, yeah, a lot of people hate on him, but. I, mean, I think it's exciting. He, Seth Curry is his college teammate, um, Seth Curry's brother, who's also, and they've now yeah. reunited in Dallas, so that'll be fun. And then, oh, and the New York Knicks, they're just reuniting the old Villanova team that went to the Final Four. Maybe they even won, but they played. So they have Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, and then DiFincenzo, and so all of them played on the same college team, and now they're on the same team. And I think that shit's fun. You know, like, if you were those guys, you're like, right. all right, it's my boys. And we're my doing. Boys back. Man, I wish George. And their fourth teammate, uh, is um, Mikel Bridges who plays in the Nets. So like the crosstown rival. And they're like, how do we trade to get him? Like they're all joking yeah, about they it. Had joined forces back in the day. Can you imagine Jordan, Bird, and Barkley on the same guy? Listen, team? Right now, if you look at the guys that have been on the teams the longest, it's like Steph Curry, uh, Draymond, and Clay are like the top. Yeah. You know, they're at the top list, those yeah. guys. And then after that, it's like Giannis. It's one of the top five longest on a team. And it feels like he just got in the league. Now, I know he's been in the league for like 10 years, 10 years or something, but that it is crazy from what up, we though, grew up finally. with. And uh, James Harden just requested a trade actually as well. That He might have be traded by the time we see this or y'all hear this, um, but he's requested three trades in three years he's or something. He's another like one. He's one of the better fucking point guards you watch play, but going to a team, he just he can't find the right fit. Like, yeah. 
Well, I think he just should have stayed with the Rockets. I mean, they they, sure. they let him do everything he wanted. I still think they ought have started him at the Thunder, and then everything yeah. would have been kosher. For sure. I agree. I mean, I we know all know. We had that really good defender guy, but I still think Harden should have started over him. Um, trying to think if there's any other huge ones. Uh, Damian Lillard also just requested a trade finally from the Portland. Hasn't went through when we're recording this, uh, but he wants to go to the Heat. Yeah. And I think what I, I found him really, you know, I guess I have two opinions. I think Dame is very good. He hit that big shot against the Thunder that like destroyed their whole dynasty and the rest. Paul George, I mean, ended it. And it was at the moment as an NBA fan, I was like, that was amazing. But as a Thunder fan, I was like, God damn it, that sucks. It was like a mixed thing. So Dame is really good, but everyone's like he has to want a title or he's a piece of shit so now he i feel like he's been forced to want to trade out yeah. to like a title contender sort of thing they didn't do um and i don't know it's i think it's weird the whole and i know it's ring culture i get that but it was only ring culture really to me only was supposed to exist for like the goats like yeah. we're talking about comparing the jordans the kobe's the lebron like mm. the ring culture is not about all-star you know, I mean, Dame's a superstar, but he's not like an all-time top twenty guy well, or something. There's a so. dude on the background of the fucking Spurs that had like seven rings. Uh, yeah, Robert Horry has five. I mean, right? I mean, I mean so, he was a good player. Yeah, right, like, he's a role player. Right. So, um, anyway, basketball is great. I, you know, it might all be fake. Of course, I like to say that. I saw something else this week that claimed that the NFL, NBA, and NHL, or no, maybe it was MLB, that all of them were. There was some proof of how they've been faked since like the 80s or something. But I was like, honestly, I do believe it might have been faked then. But once it got to where it was so big, they're probably like, all right, no matter what happens, we're I good. I could see easier fixing a basketball game than a football game. Really? I disagree. I disagree. Refs but can, the point guard can control damn near everything if they're good. But a referee can control a football a game better. Uh, I yeah. think. I mean, that's because I think that's the, how you rig it. If you get the refs. referees involved, yes. Yeah. And um, and a lot of refs in the NBA games, I think, were. I think that was yeah. part. And I think a lot of it actually comes the reason they were fake. That now kind of came back to me. It was all about gambling. It was the Vegas gamblers. Um, those guys would tell the NFL basically, we need this to happen for us to make that, and then they'll get kicked back, sort of thing. And that kind of helped fund them early earlier on so it wasn't like completely rigged it was just like once the bets came in maybe That's someone let somebody know jordan for gambling it would have hurt the whole damn sports industry right no let's just make him go to baseball for a couple years and bring him back to basketball it was a whole fucking distraction makes sense to me um all right another sports story thing espn laid off a lot of people uh they're gonna lay off a lot more from what i understand um just cutting out which is so stupid i don't watch it much i do have access to it i watch it every once in a while they just pay like a five guys a whole bunch of fucking money, like a Stephen A. And they're like, just be on all day. We're going to pay you so much. And then they fire all the people that are like, they'll stay fire like 20 people. And then they keep one guy, you know, and just pay them a whole <laughs> bunch of like money. Stan Everett or Stan Brett. Well, when they I, fired one of the main guys that was done it with Stuart Scott. Well, I know it. the one I was most, I'm not disappointed. I'm actually excited about it was Jalen Rose got fired. And, uh, I used to love Jalen and Jacoby, which was a podcast when I first got on a podcast of so sports when I listened to. And they were uh, from Grantland, which turned in, which was Bill Simmons' website. He got fired from ESPN, made R- the ringer, and now does his own thing. But I just want Bill Simmons to hire them too now that they're fired from ESPN and then they have them redo their podcast that I used to listen to. Like, that's, I know, like a self, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, I hope they pull that I mean, off. ESPN, <laughs> watch what's going on. They're, they're keeping the Stephen A's, the Kendrick yeah. Perkins, the, the announcers that nobody really likes, but they say all the controversial bullshit. Yeah. Well, I think what they're going to do is they're going to keep using uh previous players so like jj reddick friend he has his own podcast is pretty successful at it um and then he gets hired by espn he's gonna probably run out that contract they probably won't rehire him or whatever and so unless he's like amazing you know or unless like he gets a lot of ratings and then they'll just say well, we'll fire him and get the next guy that just retired and they'll probably just go through the guys that they can give cheap contracts right out of the league and they'll just probably run through those guys and those guys will do it because they'll get their podcasts off but, the ground it's like the guys that all had actual stellar careers in football or off on fox you know terry Real, bradshaw dude, tom brady is going to be the worst fucking football announcer of all time i cannot wait he had signed this huge mega deal he's gonna be horrible what, i don't care what anyone says romer is, romo is the best announcer since fucking madden it is fucking hands down everyone he, claimed last season he fell off but i didn't listen so i don't know well it's because the ex- i don't know. just want to hate on romo right they always have you yeah. <laughs> like he calls the plays before they fucking happen. None of you other announcers have that fucking knowledge. Right. I mean, I would, you just it, don't. Another one at ESPN, Jeff Van Gundy, my favorite uh, basketball play-by-play guy, probably. Uh, he was let go. And I'm like, and hopefully he'll be go back into coaching or something. I mean, it's been years, but I think he could. But yeah, he would like, like what they need to do here is this, this, and this. And it happens. And you're like, yeah, he's so fucking smart. You know, like, and that's, 
I always enjoyed him. And they kept Mark Jackson, who's like the fucking worst. So I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Probably keep the Trent Dilfers and stuff to get quarterback experts. Huh? Right. Uh, Trent Dilfer actually is a coaching for some college team, and he has in his contract that he can go on certain podcasts, and they can't. Like it's written into his college contract. I think it's so funny. Podcasts take over the world, bro. Uh, <laughs> Got to get his voice out. Yeah. Um, all right, my last sports thing, uh, and this has been kind of going on for a while. Um, and so I just had some case we needed something, but MMA guys versus boxing guys. I think the whole argument's always very stupid because what happened? Because I guess what sparked all this recently is uh, Joe Rogan on one of his podcasts said that if Tyson Fury and John Jones were locked in a room together and one of them had to take out the other one to get out of that room, John Jones would scrap the floor with Tyson Fury. Meaning if it's an all, all, no, no holds bar, do whatever yeah. the fuck you can do. And I agree with that. Cause I do think MMA, I mean, that's MMA, right? Yeah, yeah no, all, and then all of it. what always happens is these boxing guys want to box the MMA guys. And it's cause they make more money in boxing, right? But that, then that's how it gets pitched. It's like, you think you're the best come find me here. It's like, but that's not what Joe Rogan said. Joe Rogan said, you're locked in a room together or like not mm-hmm. a box, not with big gloves. And you're like, have to do these rules. That wasn't his argument. And yeah, Tyson Fury probably would beat up all these MMA guys in boxing. Chances are, I don't fucking know. Maybe, uh, uh, Francis Nagano will surprise everyone. I don't fucking know what's going to happen there, but it's like, I do think MMA is just so much superior to boxing. Like as a fan, I, I was the earlier ultimate fighter fan that yeah. I watched all those early seasons. And I was like, boxing's dead. We're fucking long live MMA. But uh, <laughs> I love the fight night video games. So I want to like boxing, but I just think boxers are out of their mind when they act like what they're doing is more impressive or better than uh, these box I mean, MMA guys. When they go against MMA guys, if they're just standing up, I mean, I'm usually going to give the edge to the boxer because the stand-up game of most of the MMA guys isn't great, and they're not very pinpoint on their punches. Right. Um, and if you lock Tyson Fury and John Jones in a room, we'd all like to think John Jones would won, but Tyson Fury's not fucking American. That motherfucker's, he might be evil in a fucking room. And then motherfucker, he like a, he reminds me of a Siberian Russian type. Was well, a gypsy. Get, that, well, that motherfucker go ape shit in a goddamn fucking room. No holds barred, no rules. Maybe, right. I mean, that's what I believe. I mean, <laughs> so I would that motherfucker the, the bite men- his head off and fucking keep going. Ain't even like uh, so a you meal. think he has the mentality edge somehow? I do. But it, like I said, if it's a UFC match, John Jones is going to own his ass. Right. But boxing match, it could go either way. But you walk him in a room, I just, I don't know. I say a mean man and Fury. See, I think out. John Jones would, like Fury. would choke him out no matter what very quickly. <laughs> I just think, because I've seen guys fight where one was a wrestler and one wanted to stand up, like just street fight, right? Like you were friends in college, or whatever. Every time the wrestler will just choke out the dude that's like, we'll stand him up. Because <laughs> yeah. like when it really hit, when like there's not a ref there, the wrestler guy knows. But, he yeah. just knows I'll just choke him out and yeah. it's done. Like, so I've been a witness to that where I've had to like be there and I had friends were fighting and my friend got choked out and then he got mad afterwards. And I didn't step in and I was like, bro, you wanted to fight yeah. and he didn't do anything illegal. He right. fucking dodged your punch and <laughs> choked you out. I don't know. Yeah. What to, you know, so I, that's, I guess where I, my brain goes is in a, that scenario, but sure. Tyson Fury could like headbutt him and get the advantage. But they are both professional fighters too. In right. a sense. So they'll have, now I wish the MMA didn't pay fighters so shitty, so you could get some of these sort of crazy bouts, right? You but they pay Dana them White fucking nothing. That. I know. Well, they've they, now been bought by who, the whatever group, and Dana White keeps it that way. They was know. making money when they got the advertise sponsors, on right. their shorts and stuff because they get paid by their sponsors. But since Dana White come in and it's all Reebok shorts now, well, the company gets I'm all the saying, money. It wasn't Dana White was there when they could still get sponsors, but yes, when Reebok came in, well, he's the head of the company. He taking the shit. But it was, I'm saying someone he came in, he did make a decision at some time though to switch it over to whatever. Well, um, but he does keep, I mean, he makes, he does good press events. I don't think he's probably worth <laughs> what they pay him or whatever, but he does keep them uh, in the news or whatever, you know. Right, right. I don't know how much that actually matters. Someone else could probably do it too. <laughs> Joe Rowan should just be the fucking commissioner of the UFC, but I mean, he's probably too unhinged for him in some way. So anyway, that's our sports. Talk. You got any other sports ideas? Either one of y'all? Anything on your mind? No, I'm just here. Just I'm trying to do our next secret show about <laughs> football. If he, whenever y'all, I would only if both of y'all could be there, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so if y'all, have you ever not snappy? If you want to do it, you let me know. We'll do football memories. Oh, the Shout football out. memories. <laughs> Great times. 
That's right. So you got to give me a week ahead of time on memories because I got to try to lodge them. Yeah. The things out of my deep Xanax. Uh, right. Old. Yeah. yeah. They're sometimes they're there. there. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes I got to really. Re- oh, yeah. Well, I'll come up with questions as well. So I'll be like, you know, when did you start playing football? What, what <laughs> position were you whenever or something? You know, yada, yada, yada. what coach was the best? <laughs> Which one sucked ass and all that all sort of, of shit. <laughs> and um, all right, let's play us a song. Yeah. Um, what's gonna be from a new artist here? All these new motherfuckers. Um, let me put on my flashlight so I can fucking read. Oh, shit, surprise, as fuck. Uh, Cameron Tomasabi. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Tomasbi. T O M A S B I. Tomasbi. Cameron Tomasbi. I don't know. And the name of the song is Gypsy Wind. Let's get it, Gypsy. Gypsy Wind. <laughs> Gypsy wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Gypsy journey. Mm-hmm. I had to go take a shit, but I came in at the end of it. I'm like, God damn it, I missed the good song. Like, <laughs> no, nah, man, it was really good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Part I heard of it. My yeah. bad. I, I, I enjoy having those vibes when we can't like switch it up. We don't always get quality yeah. other genres, you know, all the time. Take us on a journey. But when we do, we got them. Uh, yeah. Or we'll play them, I mean. Uh, so, yeah, Snappy had to go take a shit. And then yeah, skinny... Why don't we say take a shit? Why don't we say leave a shit? Um, that is weird. That is weird that we say take a shit. <laughs> well, it's... um. <laughs> It is like an act. Like the whole thing somehow is an act, a description of it. But yeah, you don't say that any other time. I mean, I'm not going to reach in there and take it nowhere. Like, I'm trying to send <laughs> that motherfucker to the bliss. It's well, just I mean, some redneck it shit. Abyss, you think, abyss. think it is a red, just some redneck shit that we started? Or do you think someone else started it and we adopted The way we grew up and seeing how all, like our parents shit, are like probably. 30 years behind, I mean, minus your mother, I mean, but. 
And she's a little bit, but yeah, not as much as I mean, Our family just like, I feel like I was raised by generations 30 years before the people that was raised by age. Like, right. Well, I we think was I was raised different. like the way the kids your age were raised. Yeah. And I think you were raised the way like, probably like Uncle Ricky and shit. Not quite yeah. that bad, but yeah. yeah. But like, no, but how their peers would have right. been. Not how they were with their people right. their age. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because like, I remember Ricky. just friends, like all the VHS tapes and stuff I had were. Like things like people you your age would have owned, not right. things kids my age. You know, I owned like all this old shit <laughs> forever. And it wasn't until my parents got married, which was I was like six or whatever. My dad, when I was in fourth grade, got a better job, and then I started getting like cool shit. But before that, it was like a lot of weird flea market shit, yeah. you know, and things like that. <laughs> that was more of the last different perspectives and how I guess we the people raised us seen us seen the world a little different what we're saying <laughs> right yeah <laughs> stuck in some ways well me and Cooper were talking this morning it's almost like were we raised in the last great generation I'm sure everyone thinks that and I'm sure people older than us are like y'all generation wasn't great but I do feel like we, we were the last the little ones that like you went out I'll be home at eight o'clock tonight and you just kind of went and did whatever around town came back it wasn't yeah. because the internet wasn't what it was you couldn't just GPS and track everything all the time it was like there, you had some kind of freedom as a kid to figure shit out well, a little we bit. We were talking about this at the bar. Well, me and Wiley was talking, and we are like, we had to change so much for our kids, you know, to adapt to the real world, and we're like, we wasn't raised that way. Like, we really had to fucking come, like, 20 years ahead of how we were raised to figure this shit out. Yeah. Right. You know, like, I was like, why did they do that? Oh, oh well. It was fucking wrong. Let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to harp on it. Um for sure. But yeah, I definitely have moments like if I sit and think about it, I'm like, man, my mom fucked up a couple times, I guess. <laughs> or could have handled something better probably, but it doesn't matter yeah, now. Right. But just in hindsight to start thinking of things. Right. Even now. Like, they shit. did with what they knew, you know. I guess we had more we had more research material. Right, for sure. I mean, if you wasn't a rich kid with the Encyclopedia Britannica, you didn't fucking get to look up shit. Yeah, I got those in second grade. Yeah. I think we got a whole set of Encyclopedia. <laughs> they were old, I'm sure, but it was like 200 bucks the whole set or I something like I that. I think I had half the collection when they were like 13 series. We had like maybe five or six. The only time I really <laughs> remember using it is I had to do a report over... Uh, cumulonimbus, cumulonimbus clouds, whatever it was, and so I remember had getting out to see one, finding them, and all I remember is they could travel up to as fast as a car, which I remember thinking cars can travel like so many different speed like that doesn't even i didn't even understand what it meant i was like what yeah i looked up some anteaters and did a, something like that yeah um no that was the thing i had to do in it was good times but yeah and then the internet and i think the internet was great and then we also me and kubi were sheep talking i was like what fucking dial when did the shit. world quote unquote get ruined and it may just be it might be a symbol just to say social media and maybe it's just because before social media, you would just use the Internet to like just go to a Web page, read some shit. But then it did change. Something changed about it right, when social media came. 1999. It changed. <laughs> so I, don't know, I don't know if I had one had Internet then. I got it when Napster came out. So yeah, maybe 99 is about when I got it. Six, whenever I was in sixth grade, I know that. <laughs> and it was a great time for a while. All the still image pornography you could see, no videos that I could find. Yeah, it was just a picture. A up. Wait, no, <laughs> yeah, just a picture of some. I still remember the one I got caught for by my mom when I printed it out. I printed off a picture of Sable, cut to my pocket, but I printed off another one. I may say this on the fucking sex episode with fucking Brad and Kayla, so I might be giving you some freebies here. But uh, another one was just a girl in like a grocery store. <laughs> and I'm sure it was like a photo set, not a real grocery store, but she just had her tits out. Just set the thing. And I was like, this is great. You know, and you're like, this is amazing. And I, pr- I printed that and left it in the printer. My parents got back from Wichita Falls, and the mom was like, what is this? You know, and no, I got mom, my ass that came out. from such and such IP address. That didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also remember like I, the first time I got caught from history, and then I learned how to clear history. Right. You know, and then it was like, um, it was the hacker versus the, the like, cat and mouse game. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Or like well, the first time she caught some uh, DMs or what well, they weren't called that at the time. Uh, it was MSN Messenger, but it kept all the uh, history of all your conversations. I no one knew that. <laughs> and my mom, I guess some fucking Dateline shit told her. I don't know. But <laughs> she found it where this girl was all like, I'm going to suck your dick like, all so hard. And I was like, oh, you better not cut it on those braces. You know, I was being a fucking pervert. And my mom was like, what? Is-? And I was like, uh. <laughs> Well, we would go to school and, you know, we'd think we was safe and everything got away with everything. Then all these infomercials and shit come on during the day where our mom's sitting home and trying to fucking get smart and catch their kids in shit. Yeah. I mean, damn it. 
It was and then it'd be like, I got eyes in the back of my head. I mean, shut the fuck up. Part of it's good <laughs> that my mom probably knows like what I, I'm, I'm truly like, you know, in some way. But also it was like the worst day ever right when I, that came to be. So shit, my mom didn't put anything past me. <laughs> like shit. Right. That, that's, I mean, that's fun too. I mean, that's probably a more fun uh, relationship to have. <laughs> you don't yeah, have yeah. to worry or whatever. <laughs> I'm just open. <laughs> um, all right. More current event shit. I have it randomly wrote it down here and I think it's fun. It might come up later in South Dakota. Uh, they are stealing land from citizens for a carbon capture pipeline. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because it's exact opposite of the oil pipeline thing or the people that care or exactly, but it's the same thing. So they're trying to use eminent domain in South Dakota mm-hmm. where these companies can come on farmlands. They just take the land. The farmers have no say. They're surveying people's land, tell them to get the fuck out of here, I have a what gun. And these people are like, nope. Uh, and then the government, p- police are doing nothing. Because the government can take your land at any time for people that don't know that. Like, they're no matter what, they just can call eminent domain and just take it if they want. So basically, but what difference here is, is they're taking it into a private company. So this private company is coming out with their own armed guards on your land, these farmers, and saying, no, we're going to put some shit out here. And a carbon capture pipeline, all it would do is be a pipeline that they put uh, carbon in, and then they it would just sit there and do nothing. Mm-hmm. But that would offset these big businesses for them letting carbon in the atmosphere so they're not actually not so for them to meet their green goals they're not going to actually stop doing it they're just going to do this other thing that quote unquote offsets it because they buried some in the ground or something you know it's so fucking stupid right. so anyway these farmers have not they can't do anything they're going to these town hall meetings and they're going to the governor governor just letting it happen and this is one of the fucking most republican states in the fucking country so if they can't if your private fucking rights don't matter there, and I get Republicans aren't libertarians. I mean, they're big government too, so I know it's all the same. Fucking land, like, but it's crazy what's happening there. You're not getting paid for it, nothing. I don't think so. Even and if they were, you got to be a force people to do There's got to be a lawyer in a loophole out there that knows how to fucking get this shit done. Yeah. I, pro- I, I hope it works you. out. I hope it works there, out. For there's a, while, a loophole for this. There's no but, fucking way. But the way this is opposite to me is because all right. So most liberals, because again, this seems as a green energy thing. So they're like, they, liberals don't care about this, right? And conservatives care because it's farmland. But just fucking what was it three years ago when it was uh, they were going to put a gas pipeline through that Indian reservation, and mm-hmm. and people were like, you can't do that. You can't take this land and forcefully put, which I still agree with. But to me, this is the same thing. But it just the, the it's just thing. different people care about. The other one, well, they have better lawyers on their side. They've been doing this a while. <laughs> I guess so. uh, you're not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, Man, yeah, no, no. So anyway, it's crazy that these fucking pipeline shit. Um, and then in a similar move, uh, in the EU, I know I talked about meat apocalypse before, so it's kind of related. Uh, the EU government is buying farmland, um from the citizens like forcefully making them sell their farmland to them so that they'll own it well, at least they're buying and i guess but some would you be you would probably rather keep your land instead yeah. of be forced to sell it it but would be better to have some money than have nothing i agree that's what i'm getting <laughs> if, there's, at. if there's three options it's probably in the middle i agree <laughs> nah, but, but fuck the man for doing it nah, uh, man, i'm probably going to shoot him out and fucking die on the and land. then here in the u.s bill gates is buying it all and then the chinese in around we always hear stories around here of the chinese buying all this yeah. fucking land and shit and i don't know if it's fucking fear-mongering or if it's real i don't know um but it does seem like all the farmland is like really getting captured up, you know. When I was in Oregon yesterday, all the signs were like, You're in beef country, which I've never seen those signs before around there. <laughs> but people just have these signs like on their farm. It's post. beef country, baby. It's really? beef country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I was like, Well, that's, that's good, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Don't come in here and shout all your liberal beliefs at me and vegan. I'm right. eating beef. Like, yeah. you came onto my land, you knew what it was. Right. Another part, Grass fed, because <laughs> I mentioned earlier how we went to Temple and then, hey, and then back to where he goes back a fucking 45 minute total drive of this middle of nowhere fucking shit, right? And you're like, for anyone that says we're overpopulated, just vis- visit any of this shit. Right. There's land everywhere. Now, I don't know who owns it all. I don't know if they would sell it. I don't know any of that shit. But there's it's land. wild <laughs> how there's just land where nothing is on it. Just nothing. Like, it's not like they're farming it or anything. There ain't anything. no weeds. There ain't no hay. I mean, it's just look like abandoned. You're right. And so, I'm like, I don't know. It's crazy how fucking sparse shit is. And then people are acting like, yeah, just well, overpopulation leads to what? And you're like, well, well move them out. All okay. the housing, they want to build housing communities. Put them fucking where you can look out your window and see your fucking neighbor's shutters. Right. Mm. I mean, yeah. 
But Maybe you a butt to nut. <laughs> Fuck butt to nut. Grabbing the <laughs> sardines. <laughs> I like my space. Like shit, I need to spread out. <laughs> I need to spread out myself. Um, and then um, another thing here, kind of not really tied to this, but we're gonna put it in here before a song. The only or not the only one of the things that really does stick out to me about conspiracy theories lately are when they do the crisis actor comparisons. I don't know if y'all seen that. So it'll be like there's this one tragic event, and then mm-hmm. on the news there's like someone in the audience crying, you know, because like, it's a real tragic event. And it's like their niece died in something, and they interview them, and then like three years later, they're like at another tragic event crying, and they're oh, like someone else thing. tied to it. And normally I would. But when you see that happen a few times, you're like, listen, something clearly is fate. Like, there's clearly like a TV production. Like, not saying these victims didn't happen or anything like that. But when you see some of these crisis actors, and that's what they come because they the people believe they are, it just really does get your brain like, what else are they lying about? placing these weird people in baseball crowds and shit, too, when they're prom- promoting movies. Oh, yeah, the shit. Smile yeah, movie. Yeah. I didn't remember that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I think that was at least specifically for a movie. I don't think that was just. Uh, I mean, I've seen it recently. Like, mm-hmm. They was promoting something else, and like three or four games, just had this one lady with a stupid face the entire fucking game. My like, favorite. That would be hard to do in a non inning baseball game. My favorite baseball clip in the last <laughs> few years is whenever Russell Westbrook played for the Houston Rockets with James Harden, both of them, you know, and they went to a Houston Astros game and they're behind home plate and you can tell they're stoned as fuck and the pitch comes in and they don't like, <laughs> they think it's going to hit them, bro. And it's so, it's, it's such a like normal guy moment, yeah. right? Like normal guy stoned moment. <laughs> and they look at each other and giggle like they know they're all stoned, bro. Hell yeah. So go look that one up. It's very good. Very good. Um, We've all jumped behind the fucking dugout. <laughs> Yeah, one hundred. Yeah, every one of us. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would for sure. Um, all right. You know what? I'm gonna play another song. I mean, it got real fucking dark in here. Well, it was dark. Man. I went outside. <laughs> well, I guess like, damn. Bro. Oh, I didn't have a question <laughs> for Skinny. Shit. So I meant, I meant to get this. I so heard- I said. Snabby went and took a shit. I don't know why he <laughs> took it instead of left it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that joke? And um, then I was gonna say. Skinny, you are on mushrooms. We alluded to it earlier, but uh, I have heard people. I, I've taken mushrooms, of course, but since I've taken them, I've heard people feel like it makes your dick small. Not actually small, but like it appears small to you or whatever. And it doesn't, it's like it just doesn't get erect whatsoever when you're on mushrooms, or is what people are claiming. And um, I never paid attention to that. And so I was just saying, you went outside to take a piss while Snappy Same was taking, I don't know again why you didn't leave the piss. Um, but yeah, they didn't feel like your dick was small. No, it's just. Or just seem normal. <laughs> like the outside is pretty as fuck because I ain't been outside. I just moan. I know. Like, good looking yard. Nice outside because I ain't left the room since I, I peeked off in here and everything. It's like, oh, it kicked in in here. So it's been dark and shit. Like outside, oh, it's all pretty and shit. Nice. Good job. The buddy. dungeon. <laughs> um, but nice. No, everything seemed normal. Hell. Working just fine. Nice yeah. flow. Healthy, no clumps. <laughs> That's good. You got to check for the clumps. Uh, you know, if you have more than two, it's probably a problem. So, do for the check. I do remember my mom used to have like the uh, breast cancer pamphlet up in the shower of just like this. It was a drawing, but it was a naked lady. Right. You know, like filling her boobs and shit. It was like, here's the steps. And I was like, oh, God, she's leaving this in the shower. <laughs> this is dangerous. Thanks, mom. Yeah. Maybe it was on purpose. Who knows? Yeah. He knows. Check, bro. He's like, oh, yeah. he's like, you need to check for breasting. I remember, and I've heard people say this on a podcast a few years ago, so I know I'm kind of still in it, but it is true. I remember going through a stage of puberty, and I'm sure y'all did as well, where my nipples were like sensitive as fuck. Like, and I thought, am I growing boobs? Like, what? Like, is there something wrong with me? And it would be, and also was that age where it was like 15, where a lot of guys were like fucking you're grabbing, your shit. grabbing your, and you were like, they're so sensitive. But I think it is just a part of normal puberty or whatever when you're getting muscles or something. But I, there was like a year where it was like every once in a while my nipples would be all sensitive, and I was like, ugh. Uh, I don't know, bro. I, didn't, I don't know. I, I can't I didn't, remember that. I didn't get that. Oh, well, you got lucky, I, I say. Fucking, I got those, like, what they like, the little harden up little clumps and shit. They call them, like, like having hormones and shit, little, er, little areas and shit. I don't know. Yeah, I, I have a, one. it looks like I have a third nipple in a way, but it's a clogged oil gland. You're, what well, I used to call the sub nipplets. Mm-hmm. Which is like the dots <laughs> dots around the areola, if you will. Uh, you don't even call them areola on a man. But that's what we used to call them in the football locker. I go, you got a little sub nipple, what's bro? Because it'd be that's all like goosebumps. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is like five years ago. Uh, this right next to my nipple. This looks like another little nipple, and you know, I can squeeze it like once a week, and it like 
shoots out pus. And I've looked it up, but it's just a clogged oil gland. They says it normally happens from deodorant, but I've never put deodorant on my nipples, so I don't know what the <laughs> fuck happened. Um, shit running down. <laughs> but it is fun. I'll every once in a while I'll just be like, oh yeah, gotta squeeze that motherfucker. He <laughs> got some oil hanging titties and just running down from his armpits. <laughs> no, the, uh, he got the moon titties. <laughs> oh, from the deodorant? Yeah. Well, he oh. said, you know, he said it ran down, and I'm like, well, hold on, that don't make sense. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> also, I don't use a bar. Uh, I'm I'm so against stick well, deodorant. You're sweating and your deodorant start running. Maybe a little spray. Maybe down. Maybe a little spray. That spray messed over. <laughs> He could have. It could, it could be cologne, maybe. Maybe <laughs> cologne got in. <laughs> Hanging out. So I mean, be careful around the nipples, guys. That's what I'm trying to get at. You don't want to get a clogged oil gland in the nipple. And it doesn't affect my life in any way, but I know it's there. You know? <laughs> so, for me. For me to know. Right. I know it's underneath my clothes. It's there six days a week. I release that motherfucker on the seventh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Um all right. Uh, one last thing before a song. What What's everyone's opinions on rub and tugs? Mm. Like, if there was one around here, <laughs> would you go to it? <laughs> Someone else jack you off? Is that what we're talking about? All right. So you go to a okay. place that some woman gives you a massage and at the end jacks you off. You know, would you convince your significant other, whatever, mm-hmm. like, my back really hurts. I think what would really help is a massage parlor. I couldn't ever go because my wife would know what went on there. Like, How would she know? It's a marriage thing, man. You just you can't you can't lie to your wife. So right. it's like it's right. almost like oh, this was gonna they come know up. when you're fucking lying. It's, it's not worth. This it. was gonna come to my questions. I was gonna say <laughs> wh- if you bitch. said no, I was gonna say would you just talk to your wife about? I was like, hey, at this place, I got a massage. They offer. I said no the first time. But is that something that would bother you? And if she was like, I don't give a fuck, it's jacking you off. I don't. You don't even like hand jobs. Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, you're right. I don't think my wife would roll that way. I don't know. She's lady. stingy. <laughs> oh, man. She wants all to come. Yeah. You can uh, listen Ish. to the sexy talk, uh, <laughs> hear about some people talking about that. Um, yeah, I don't think mine would either. I don't think she would be necessarily cool with it, but maybe. I don't I'm know. not married, so I can't. <laughs> no, she wouldn't even want me to be seen in the building because then she'd have to be a social. Oh, you're a senior man over there. I mean, like, you know, like, not that we get out and have friends and talk. So right. I'm, I'm all friends. for it. <laughs> you see, I'm a major back rub, problem. Rub everything out. I, right, I have lots of body pain. <laughs> so I could see myself in a massage. I never went to one because I don't know what I'll do in this situation. I'd say if I was a millionaire, I would Robert craft it up. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Own craft it off. is what it is. Like, but I'm a poor guy. I do I, think no. there would be something to this idea that like you have no expectations on you. Like to them, the quicker you come, the better probably. And they're probably like really good at it. They're used to it. <laughs> they have like probably they don't care. At, they don't like your right. I don't you're not even know I can do, and you're not having to do anything to impress them. Like they don't even. It's just a job. Or, I bet there is something about. Maybe I come and say, honey, if I text you and ask you if you're tired, and you say yes, then I'm going to the parlor. Right, yeah. Like, I mean, that would be fair. I mean, if it, if it went the other way, I mean, if if it, your wife was like, I was at a massage parlor and this person offered a happy ending, you know, I, I can see where she'd get a little irritated about it. I really no, want. no, I'm saying if she, if yeah, rolls reverse, she got the massage. I know, but I would be irritated. Is what oh, I'm saying. I see what you're saying. Um, you know, but I mean, would it change anything? Would I mean, it's not like she'd come home and wouldn't let you do it, right? Or maybe she would be more into it. Like, I always thought... I got your nuts. Like, well, like, I don't go to a strip like, club no. now because there's not a strip club around it, but I always think if you were a guy that likes strip clubs, you could easily make the argument of, I go to the strip club, get all fucking sexed up, horned up, come home and deliver, you know? If the chick was into that, you could probably make that argument. So I'm assuming... Know, like, well, why do you got to do that? But with belief? guys, it's just if you... <laughs> Right, it's true. It's true. And you go, well, you wear lingerie and, and do the strip tease. And then that probably wouldn't go well either. And oh, yeah. Turn the whole thing. But that's a fun sitcom episode for sure to play out in Snappy's world. Yeah. Put the fucking lingerie on. Let's get, let's get weird. I really bitch. thought you were going to say, put the fucking mic on. <laughs> I'm about to go on a fat joke. Um, all right. Speaking of music, let's play a song. Uh, the next one we're going to play is... I thought another new artist, but I can't mm-hmm. read where I'm... Yeah, another new artist. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Uh, the name of the group is the Royal Billionaire Brothers. Ooh. And the name of the song is Split Dimension Flow. Oh, I like it already. Hell yeah. Split I'm ready. 
guess I guess y'all motherfuckers ready too Yeah Uh Feel it in my soul Big Mike Pussy push me to push P like I'm Pusha T Friday night lights fly on flights, nigga book a T Why you limit yourself to one hustle? Must have cooked the key, cop a SC and took a seat Tent the bitch so no look and see Lex Luger with Ruger, moving the midsection Sex future to let it know I had been stressing Heard a message and learned a lesson It sounded like Malcolm Little in black and white algorithms And satellites had no rhythm The man was white back, the bitch had to stab his wife on the D Like she ran that white only fan, so I had to try The winner's circle is more attractive than inner circles A lot of squares be around, hate like the color purple Not on purpose, my purchases seem to really irk you And you disguise, I'm epitomized, that shit really hurts you Bitch and bird us like candy burgers, who can you run to? Ain't no escape, I just vase some candy herb and it's chunk too Yeah I'm in love with these pre-rolls Take it back to the essence Take it back to the essence Everything is a new discovery, nigga Like preschool Yeah I'm doing alchemy Without the alchemist, it's obvious Then it's comments and shit that up like calculus Shit is hotter than cactuses Lighting matches on mattresses Serving Hallies and Samuels Chosen by God Emmanuel Going so hard like cannonballs Eat this nigga cannibal paws Lit the incense like sandalwood Feeling like face a catacorn Niggas never had a corner Borrow 170 Hennessy and we never sleep See the things that they never see Shooters out the drive through It's tribal with rivals Make a nigga sweep up the glass Rest in peace my dude Niggas rap like five Toe tapping with five Pointing fingers in courtrooms, right hands on some Bibles. My therapy cycle, people already know that. Play it close like an ISO, high bridge for the blowback. The room smoky as fuck right now. This bitch in the corner, like, come get this pussy. I might pass. Perhaps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. Nigga got options. What else could it be? Yeah. Royal Billion Brothers Split Dimension Flow mm, It was splitty for sure um, Yeah the B was cool uh, It's kind of sound like a freestyle In a lot of ways you know um, I don't know if it was Give me that, weird, give me that one vibe I don't know what the vibe it is I mean, <laughs> Me being you know not as much of a rap guy Like I could His voice sounded decent the beat was good But if you give me a give me a music one Like that, that one you know Was like a little more like, story time it's Like a poetry type I mean it was shit. good but uh, you know I don't like to really see his musicians right. Not as melodic as you yeah, might like I don't, see, I don't know terminology I just, Yeah I got you It's all the all up here I got the snap lingo <laughs> That's what right. I got <laughs> The translator. So that's why I don't mind coming over here. You two understand what I'm trying to say sometimes. When I don't have the actual words. Right. We your people. We yeah. the tribe. Y'all get me. <laughs> yes, we are the thirteenth tribe of the Judea. <laughs> uh, Y'all get me. This is what this is my session. This is what I get. This is my people. All right. So I can't forget the last two weeks. I meant to talk about this. It just didn't for some reason. Stop We're gonna do it right now. Uh, it was a list of every song on Spotify that has a billion plays. Mm. So Spotify's only exists for however long or whatever. So, you know, I just think it's an interesting list. Uh, and y'all get it. so this guy tweeted them all and then he forgot three. So the first the three he forgot. So I think it's a total. There's 38 songs total that have a billion plays mm. um, that were. Re- I'm sorry. These aren't just these were that were released prior to the year 2000. So the 38 songs released before the year 2000 that have reached it. So these are like the classics, if you will, the best classics. <laughs> um, so he has Coolio, Gangster's Paradise. Mm-hmm. Um, your 
Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams. I don't know what that fucking Eurythmics. Eurythmics? I don't know. In me. Uh, <laughs> Leonard Skinner, uh, Sweet Home, Alabama. And so those are the three that he forgot before. Um, so yeah, those are all huge, huge songs for sure. Right. Um, ACDC has two with Thunderstruck and Highway to Hell. Thunderstruck ain't even the best one. But all right, What's your cool. favorite ACDC song? Back and what? Black and Black is good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're all in the same album, right? All those songs. Yeah, I mean, like, I love all ACDC. I was just taking a stab. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> stab, stab, I, well, stab. My best friend growing up, his dad loved ACDC, and I had to get lectures all the time about how they had an original lead singer and how he was actually the best. And the guy I think of as their lead singer isn't the real lead singer. He was the replacement. And, all, and Back in Black isn't the real ACDC. And you'd be like, I think it's great. <laughs> you know, I watched but he, all the Leonard Skinner shit, too, how they got their name and all that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I saw the Netflix documentary. I've thought about I want to watch it, but just haven't. Um, all right, next one is uh, Africa Toto, or by Toto, which, um, you know, is... I think it's yeah, overhyped. Africa it it became a meme. It's like a, just a meme, basically, that people listen to. But if you like it, that's cool. Um, the next one I think is great, which is Take On Me by Aha, uh-huh, which is like one of my favorite 80s songs. Um, I don't... The take On... Exactly. Uh, okay, I have to think about it. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah, you know. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about until you sing it. Like, okay. Yeah. Hey, this is more of my playlist, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, next one, more uh, Me and Skinny. I Want It That Way by Backstreet Boys. <laughs> yeah. I Want it. Sam, that with yeah, the Backstreet Boys was huge. I and mean, when I was a kid, I'm sure Sam remember this. You couldn't actually like them, or you were gay. Yeah, and so <laughs> you had to like secretly. Like, I, I was more of an insane guy than Backstreet Boys like, myself. Yo, what are you, but, Backstreet or insane? You yeah, had to choose. You had to be. In the you had to choose. <laughs> when I grew up, I just had to get turn that 98 degrees down. bullshit yeah. out of here. <laughs> and but, with that but even like I would listen to them with a couple of my friends. But it, like when we did, we were like we can't tell you when we listen to those. And then like you couldn't admit to it. It was like all. It was a big secret that you even owned. It. Those CDs didn't exist in my well, album. We jammed the right. fuck out of it. And the only reason I owned the three different NSYNC CDs only because my grandparents lived in Colorado just assumed because of my age I had to like them so they kept mailing oh, we, them to me. Oh, we had a description And so I didn't thing. have them when I got to list but I actually never bought them and so I'd be like, I don't fucking own NSYNC CD. But I <laughs> like all those infomercials. My mom you had like to get a monthly CD, and, like we got oh, a yeah. CD each month and shit. Like, no, I, we, we definitely signed up for that. <laughs> I, got, like, got, I got CDs out of Slim nowhere. Shady, I think LP, we all and, did that, like 40 CDs for yeah. 20 pennies. Or, my mom was like, mine was 12. Uh, I don't know, it was so yeah. ridiculous. And my, my mom and daddy just got like one and I got the other 10 or <laughs> but something. But we would just but. redo it. It was like, my mom right. was getting CDs and shit. Here, pass me CDs. Like, okay. Redo it every couple of years. Yeah, it was a good time. All right, next we got Bon Jovi's living on a prayer Mm -hmm. which is the only bon jovi song i think which is crazy because i would have thought he had something more popular than that for some reason um i would say so ccr have you ever seen the rain which is again the only ccr song i didn't think that was their most popular uh but they are huge they're way bigger than people fucking i think realize um cold play yellow i do remember when that song came out yeah i downloaded that on napster uh dr dre and snoop dogg still dre Okay. Which is great. Uh, is classic. But I'm so surprised not to see next episode on this. Like, I just would have thought next episode would have had more than Still Dre, but I guess maybe this, the piano intro is so good on Still I don't know. Mm, Excuse that's the argument. Uh, the Eagles, Hotel California, Earth, Wind, and Fire, September, Fleetwood yeah, Mac, yeah, yeah. Dreams, which that had a huge viral moment, so that would make sense. Uh, Goo Goo Dolls, Iris. I never listened to Goo Goo Dolls. Me either. That's like my wife's stuff, you know. And I'm like, I don't know. I was kind of missed all that myself. Uh, Guns and Roses, Sweet Child of Mine, which again, I'm surprised that one's it because I thought Welcome to the Jungle would be on here, and I don't see that. Right. And I was their song. I yeah. thought that was a Bon Jovi song. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you fucking racist, thinking all white guys with blonde hair are the same. Gonna <laughs> uh, be on Keep things. it honest. Yeah, Guns and Roses is I'm, my, my best friend growing up. The, the one who's Dallas based, he loved Guns and Roses, and he would like listen to them all the time. And I, they are good, but I always thought they were way overrated uh, myself. Um, let's see where I'm at on this fucking shit. Uh, Journey, don't stop believing. I remember when that fucking yeah. song blew up again when I was in high school. I think it was like. Laguna Beach or one of those fucking stupid MTV shows played it and all of a sudden overnight it was like everywhere again <laughs> and I, but yeah people love Journey um, Mariah Carey All I Want for Christmas I think that's kind of yeah. cheating because everyone listens to that every Christmas you know of course right. it got to the billion or, right. oh, Christmas you gotta hear that song that's only Mariah Carey's on it's on here uh, Metallica's Inner Sandman so that's more Snappy's Alley I don't I never really listen I've heard Inner Sandman but I don't 
Football, no, right there, <laughs> no much. I know their other one that came out on Stranger Things. I'm sure it's close after Stranger Things blew it up. Whatever their first song was. Um, people listening right now that know Metallica are like they're yelling. If it. a song comes on and then I can get into singing, about, oh yeah, that's the name of it. But like, you know, Satan's quote, Playground quote names, yeah. or whatever, <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> um, Michael Jackson's Billie Jean, which is amazing. I love it. I just again, it's the only Michael Jackson song on this one? list. Wow, and that's crazy to me. Well, I like it because when Billie Jean comes on, it doesn't almost matter feeling, where. Like, what the fuck? I'll fucking start dancing a little bit, like Billie Jean, you rock my world. You know, right? I mean, well, it's I guess great. Again, I just thought <laughs> I thought it was like Taylor. I thought it right exactly. I thought that Billie Jean would be more like an underrated hit, right? I thought like it would have like way less than you would think because it's so good, but underrated. But yeah. It's Surprise me! It's Thriller came out late, and it was just a whole. But these are since the year two thousand, yeah, or before two thousand right. since Spotify existed. So they've all had the same amount of time, uh-huh. or all those old songs, or would be. Um, but maybe they came at different times, you know. Right. It, so anyway, uh, Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit, and Nirvana come as you are. So they have two. Wow. Um, right for them to have two, yeah, and these other people we mentioned they only have one. <laughs> That's yeah. the surprising part. Now. I, I I do think Nirvana is a little overrated, but there are days I like it. Other days I hear it, I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. But there are other days I'm like, I think it's it was the whole baby cover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a little fucking pedophile, if you ask me. Wow. Um, and then Oasis, Wonderwall, <laughs> Wonderwall was fucking huge. Uh, huge is a huge one hit wonder. I mean, <laughs> didn't much else. Uh, Queen has one, two, three, four, five Queen songs. We got another one, Bots the Dust, Bohemian Rap City, Don't Stop Me Now, We Will Rock You, and then Under Pressure, which also features Bowie. Didn't even get We Are the Champions? What? Uh, nope. <laughs> Did not. Um, someone claims there's like this. Uh, did you know the song actually doesn't say this and we are the champions and i was like what and i whatever it was, I was like yeah it does and they're like if you listen to it here i'm like maybe y'all got a different <laughs> recording because my jock rock volume four fucking had it all right <laughs> you know? yeah. my cd was <laughs> um radiohead creep I really only know that song because of Guitar Hero. <laughs> Guitar Hero. That's all the reason I know it. It's like playing a song. Guitar Hero. But it's good. It is know, a, it's very catchy. Yeah, why people love that <laughs> shit. Say, what the fuck? That's how I know it. Um, <laughs> what does RHCP stand for? Oh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I was like, what the fuck? I do like Red Hot Chili Peppers. That too. Uh, Californication and Under the Bridge. Both are good, but not. I think Scar Tissue's their best song but maybe it's too sad hey, but they have a lot of hits i'm surprised uh, uh, i thought there would be more on there what qp really likes the something that's kiss in the title like lick my kiss or something it's some fucking love. stupid fucking song <laughs> title um i Who really i do like them but their lyrics are so stupid but now that i've heard how they make their songs it makes sense he just top writes and he plugs in words that fit his little mumbling i'm like well i get it but it's also kind of and flea's like the most overrated fucking bass guitarist <laughs> of all time but um anyway red hot chili peppers is good um <laughs> rem lose my religion i don't really know that song I but either. i bet if i heard it i would right if i know the rem i mean but like i gotta hear the music right uh survivor eye of the tiger of course, I know that one from the Rocky movies. Um, Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Gray song. I will say that one's very good. I don't know. Um, it's kind of like 80s emo, which isn't actually emo. It's pop music, but it's what became pop but in the 80s. They called emo. It's weird. Okay. Um, the Beatles has only one song, Here Comes the Sun. I know. I think the Beatles is the most overrated band of all time. And everyone else say, no, they paved the way, so you can't say that. And I agree. They did. But... I just don't think their shit holds up when you listen yeah, to yeah, it, man. you know, myself. Um, the police, every breath you take, uh, fuck the police because they sue every rapper that samples fucking two notes of a fucking police song, so fuck them. Uh, Wham, Last Christmas. So th- those are all of the billion plays of songs that came out before the year 2000 on Spotify. There was no country hits on there, was there? Not there, one. There was not. I think they, they're claiming there's a total of 419 total that are in the billion club. So that's only 38 out of the out of that are before the year 2000. Keep pushing, uh, snacks. Yeah. <laughs> Keep pushing. So it's... uh we'll Put it on there. Pretty interesting. And I think iTunes has no billion play songs. So they're really getting their ass beat. Maybe they do have a couple, but it's a lot different. But but you can buy Spotify playlist easily, uh, they claim. So 
you know, they all might be fake, but who would pay to play f- old song? Fake plays for old song. I don't know. You know, right? Who the fuck knows? But anyway, I thought it was interesting. So yeah. only got it's never back to memories. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> some good songs on that. I would like to make some, you know, retro inspired music in the future. You know, something that sounds like it's straight out of a different genre. But you just gotta dive deep into it. You know, you gotta really get really weird, weird. Yeah, you gotta get weird and you gotta not be self conscious about it. That's always my problem. I'll do something weird, but I'm like, oh, I can't put that out. <laughs> out of nowhere, you did start mm. singing, like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, bro, fuck with me. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, get with Skinny me. Skinny does get to be here, like, uh, a lot of raw shit of, like, I'll make a beat and I'm like, oh, this sounds like a so and so beat. And he's like, what do you mean? And then I'll, like, imitate it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I hear it. But it requires you to, like, and I'll start doing, like, weird dumb Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah. And he's like, you got to do it like that. I'm like, well, I would never do it like that. Me and Skinny, we're simple people. We got to have stuff explained sometimes. <laughs> there you go. You just got to yeah, listen to the music. <laughs> All right. Like, let us. I'm on, like, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> let us play another song. And we get back. I'm going to do a top five list because we haven't done one in weeks. And I just got to get them out to keep the fucking momentum yeah. going. And then also, y'all work on y'all's next top five list. I know y'all loved them last time. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> whatever y'all want to do, of course. Just let me write it um, down. <laughs> next song we're going with is going to be another new artist, I believe, <clears throat> that goes by the name of Karina Morris. Is that what I wrote? Let's see. I can't tell. Uh, Karina Marie. Oh, that was yeah. an E, not an S. Exactly. Karina Marie, and the name of the song is Game Show. Welcome. Let's play. I'm 
not an option. Karina Marie. Like, who hurt you? <laughs> like, yeah, Game <laughs> show. <laughs> like, he, he fucked up. And if you don't know, <laughs> she is not an option. She's not a fucking option. But I get it. I will say, I agree with her 100%. Um, for me and my, if I was uh, dating her when I was, you know, and all that, if there was ever a time it was like a girl was like, well, there's you and another guy. It's like, well, then you can just take my name out. Like, as that, because that's what she means during her own experience. Like, mm-hmm. well, I just won't be an ob. Like, I am the same way because I can't, my confidence can't handle that. You know, I got need at least a pretend that I'm the the only one. one. (laughs) Yeah, but exactly. Uh, So I get it. I get it 100%. (laughs) Shout out Green Marie. You fucking out here and hurt me, motherfucker. I'm That's the right. only one, damn it. I do the hurting around here. <laughs> Listen again, toxic episode. Toxic relationship. I think it's been, it should be out when y'all hear this. Uh, me and Skinny talk about uh, toxicity. Uh, to- toxic toxicity. relationship. One I was in and uh, how Skinny has been. <laughs> A couple of times. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so, kind of how I guess. Um, and you, Snap, you up. come up in one of the stories uh, in the <laughs> drug episode and also that one. And I'll just bring it up here briefly of that Thanksgiving I rode with you to Warika. I was actually at like my most drugged out moment of my life. And I just needed a ride home and I rode with you. And I don't think you because you, you didn't know me. We didn't hang out or anything. So yeah. you didn't notice a difference. But I was like, that was probably the worst my life ever was. And I got just had to get home. Like, and thank you, I knew it was bad because you reached out to me, and that's just something not you did, you didn't do, right? And so I mean, and I lost like forty or fifty pounds in like a month before that. I was like way like skinnier. You came to college, you was doing your own thing. I was already living my fucked up life, so yeah, we, right. that was kind of start of us hanging shit. out, really though. A little bit, yeah. And uh, so yeah, that all happened and then eventually I, you know everything got good i didn't have a license so i couldn't drive home myself so shit was wild um good i could have right i would have got away with it but i only drove one time the whole time i did i there was a year i didn't have a license um it was only gone for six months but i didn't do i fucked around for the first six months didn't do any of the shit i was supposed to do to get it back and i was like all right i gotta get get on it um but yeah, the one time I drove was for a final because I was going to be late. I was like, I have to make it to the class. Yeah, all the time, like years without licenses and shit. I think yeah. the guy in Ada gets pulled exactly. over. Exactly. Right? I just knew my luck. That's how I feel. I'd already been arrested sure. twice. Like, I wasn't going to arrest like it again. Driving out unlicensed. Yeah, Indian. <laughs> you don't matter for you. <laughs> plus, like where Ada. Ada. <laughs> I mean, I was to find well, that shit out. Like, he's the real golden boy in that community that no one knows. Only like we know. Right. Like, Actually, Skinny's golden. We only brought up on a I boat. I am like a golden thing with the we like, know. <laughs> I think we uh, brought up on the bonus show, not on a real show, but Skinny is native. That has come out. <laughs> he can be pulled over by the white police. He is a native I, man. Now the help. native police got to get him. That helps him also, out. you know, I guess you could just quit paying child support. They can't do nothing. Like, Fuck them white police. <laughs> <laughs> Officers. Yeah, bro, they see you start tapping in, start thinking about different things like, what can I do and shit? Like, boom, boom. Like, hell. Hell yeah. All right, I'll play this top five jingle and I'm going to come back with my top five like favorite thing. Like, yeah, regular awesome. Nintendo games. So I'm going to go old school. Hell yeah. yeah. All right, top five list. I've had a few ready for months just for whenever I need to get them done. No one here personally. Y'all probably never played a regular Nintendo. I'm sure Snappy has played a regular Nintendo, but yes. you didn't own one probably because you had a Sega, you said. Mm-hmm. But you maybe no, had a... No, we had, we had the Universal for the whole family. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, nice. no one kids. Yeah, the first console I got was a regular Nintendo. My Uncle Raymond <laughs> went off as uh, my mom's younger stepbrother. Um, he went off to the Marines when I was like four and he just left. He gave it to me and my Aunt Rachel. But yeah, I got to keep it in my house. And I got all of his games. And after that, my dad would go to flea markets and come back with games and shit. And I, you know, because I was like, I didn't realize at the time the Super Nintendo already existed then. Mm-hmm. So like my dad was just buying all these old games at flea markets. But he it, that happened all the time. Like I when I got Mario 2, he came back and I didn't even know. I mean, we'll get into it because it'll be on my list. But um Anyway, regular Nintendo, very good. It's hard to go back and play them now, to be honest, because they were only two buttons and a directional pad, and you're like, I mean, you can do it. There are certain games that hold up. Like, I think all the Marios hold up, and there's certain stuff, but um, 
if you didn't grow up with them, I can see it being like Skinny's played some old, you know, I brought some old games to him and he was like, what the fuck on some stuff. It blows your mind. You're right. You just didn't, you just didn't grow up with it. Um, so anyway, my number five I'm going with is one that probably will be specific to me. I don't know. I think on my list is all games I own because you own that's all you have to go off of. It wasn't like now where you just played every fucking game. You only had whatever the fuck you had back in 1994 or whenever this was. And so uh, my number five game is Mickey's Mouse Capades. Now, this was a Mickey Mouse game (laughs) and uh, it had Mickey and Minnie Mouse (laughs) and it was like a platformer, I guess, Mm -hmm. like Mario ish, a little more seem more puzzle based or something like it was a static screen you had to like figure out to get to the door maybe kind of like uh man i can't remember that game at the moment where the girl fucking jumps around the screen y'all wouldn't know but i'm trying to yeah. trying to jar my memory anyway it's around my mind right now <laughs> ron brought it up when he was on the podcast last time and so i was trying to like man celeste the name of the game is celeste so it's kind of maybe more like that like an old school version but it wasn't as fast but anyway it was just you got hearts on the screen and you try to save fucking mini as mickey you know it's basic fucking mario knockoff i'm sure but i fucking play the fuck out of mickey's mouse capade remember, mickey the fu- mouse capade. <laughs> remember that game a lot um number four on my list um this is one i just mentioned i remember my dad brought it to me um i already played mario 3 i already owned that but i didn't i never played mario 2 i owned also mario 1 but mario 2 was just a thing i didn't know about didn't have and then my dad come back from the flea market with mario 2 and I was so pumped and then immediately kind of led down because it is nothing like Mario 1 and 3. Mario 1 and 3, you go fucking left or right platformer, which Mario 2 you do as well. But it was actually in Japan, a totally different game called Doki Doki Universe. And then in America, they just fucking put the Mario characters in place of the other characters and then called it Mario 2. But it wasn't actually <laughs> really a Mario 2 game. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I played For it. sure, motherfucker. <laughs> and I liked it a lot, but yeah. I didn't. But you knew even you're like, it's not Mario, though. Like you just knew playing it. And you, but you got to choose between Mario, Luigi, the princess or Toadstool. So you could there was always variation. Luigi jumped higher. Toadstool was faster. And then Princess Peach, if you held the button, she floated. She yeah. like jumped and glided. And that was kind of fun. Um, but I spent a lot of time fucking playing Mario, too, because, I, again, I was so invested in Mario three and one already that I was like, I got to figure this fucking game out. Um <laughs> Man, I just, it's weird because I don't care at all about Nintendo now, but back then, I mean, Nintendo was life. ADHD you know. for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and um, number three on my list. This one could have been anywhere. Uh, this game series, there's multiple, I think like six of them on the console. This is Mega Man. Now, I think my favorite, because I went back and looked at which enemies were in which game. I think the one I owned and played the most of was Mega Man 5. <clears throat> Um, so they're all the same to me, basically, though, when you see them, uh, people that know about Mega Man, there's eight bosses and you can play the stages in any order you want. You just choose a face and then you play that stage, but there is a preferable order because certain like you play like Lava Man. I don't know if Lava Man's a real guy, but say if there was a Lava Man, if you beat him, you get like the Lava Gun. And so then if you play the Ice Guy, the Lava Gun's gonna fuck him up. So you like, there is a certain order right. you want to beat him in. to play it. Right. And I love, and then what I used to remember the most about playing with Rusty, and you would get to the end, there weren't save points in games back. If there was a save in a game, and there weren't, I don't think, any in regular Nintendo, because they, that didn't really, I don't think existed yet, but there was later in Super Nintendo, but it, they had to put a battery, a watch battery in it. And that's what keeps your save file. And without that, you don't have that. So for Mega Man, they would give you a code. It would be like you beat a level and go, here's a code. You have to pull out a notebook and you have to write down the fucking code on the screen. And then you would come back and hope you wrote it down right. Mm-hmm. And you would top it in and hope you fucking pull the And if not, it'd be like, fucking wrong go, motherfucker. We're doing that shit. I mean, people writing shit down. Yeah. Um, so that was wild. But Mega Man 5, um, I really did. I, loved, I wasn't good at it. You know, I've never beat a fucking Mega Man game, I'm sure. Um, but that wasn't the point as a kid, necessarily. Because, again, you didn't say it. You just fucking went as far as you could. And you it's tried so to cool. Damn, more. Mega Man's were cool. Yeah, I liked them a lot. Now, Mega Man X later on the Super Nintendo... I, I didn't like, I had friends that loved them, but I was like, I don't know. I kind of liked original Mega Man better myself. All right. Number two, this is one I'm sure Snappy has played Tecmo Super Bowl. Um, I spent, it's funny to me to think about because I would think more like Madden or NBA were like these games I spent hours in, and I do. But Tecmo Super Bowl is the first one. They had a season mode where you got to play the whole season. Yeah. So, like, again, ADHD brain like me, <laughs> you got to like, I would always choose some random fucking team, probably the Bills. I used to love Jim Kelly as a kid for no fucking reason. I just decided I loved him. And so I probably chose the Bills. And then you just done the whole season with the Bills. And you would try to, and it kept track, I think, of your stats to some extent, uh, as long as you didn't turn off the game. Yeah. And uh, 
I love that. I try to play it recently. I download this little fucking handheld thing. I have it was way harder than I remember, but I'm just out of practice. I think uh, the Nintendo Super Tech Mobile carried on over to the Sega for me because they, right. they had one. But there was season modes because you could play because it, it was an hour a game. Yeah, like you know, no matter how you fucking looked at it, it was an hour a game, or forty five minutes maybe. Yeah, whatever but, it was. Yeah, yeah, man. But like, yeah, it would it would uh, keep your progress through the season. Yeah, so it would do the you season. Just run a bunch of up and down, and if you pick the right play, you know. <laughs> right. Well, the way you can just run, if you get certain, like Bo Jackson thinks a cheat code yeah. on it and stuff. Um, but it's, I really, I just put a lot of hours into it. Like in hindsight, it was probably one where I'm sure if any of my parents or grandparents were paying attention because they didn't, they just, you would be in a room playing video games for hours and they were like, <laughs> fine, he's not fucking bothering me or whatever. But if they would have watched, like, probably how, like, I just was like, so focused in this fucking simulation game because I think that's a different thing. Like I'm like the manager, you know. I'm like looking at one. It's just like a whole <laughs> different. It's like a different. It's a different I'm sort of obsession. Shit. I feel like, and I still enjoy sports games. Um, I just have I haven't played a new one in a long time. It's been a long time for me. All right, and then number one, no surprise, one of the best games ever made, Super Mario Three. Um, this I remember. This came with my regular Nintendo, so I played it often. I went back and played it recently, you know, played it forever. Um, it's the one where Mario gets the little raccoon tail and canal fly. You know, that's basically how you know which one it is. Um, I loved Mario 1 as well. I had one that came with Duck Hunt, so that one could have been on the list also. But Mario 3, to me, just surpassed Mario 1 in every way. And it's like, well, that one's just the better version. And now there's an argument being made between Mario 3 and Super Mario World on Super Nintendo. Uh, I don't know which one's better. It goes either way for me. But the only thing that sucks is there's no save file in Mario 3. But that's why they put the whistles. So you can get the whistles and you can jump all the way to the last level and beat it pretty quickly. Yeah, that ain't a bad list. I mean, I would have went with some Double Dragon and some Contra. Right. See, I never played either one. So Contra, oh my God. Well, if you had the code, you know, A, B, A, B, up, down, up, down, select. I'll see. Left, right, A, B, select, start, something like that. Right, yeah. You get 100 close. lives. You know, but you could really fuck sure. your partner if you didn't like the person you was playing with because you had two people. They could run off and leave your ass, and you would die. Right. I mean, and you, if you was pissed at them, you just do it to be an asshole. But right, you know, or like con- fuck them to where they fall in a yeah, pit or Contra something. Was a great, great, great game. <laughs> I've heard great things. I've just never played it. Um, my, at the time, <laughs> my three uh, honorable mentions was Bubble Bobble, which is a game <laughs> I remember playing with my I friend here all the time. It. You were these little dinosaurs, and you shot bubbles. And they, I don't, I don't quite remember it all exactly, um, <laughs> but I remember playing a lot of it with my friend Doom for some reason, and I liked the little dinosaur guys. And then Castlevania, I actually own Castlevania on the regular Nintendo, and so I love that game. But now it's thought of as like this hardcore, like I don't know. I was like, it wasn't. It was just a weird. You had a whip and you took out bats. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't nothing, but I, I played it a lot. Dumb shit. And then Ninja Gaiden, I own Ninja Gaiden One and Ninja Gaiden Three. And Ninja Gaiden was good. It was hard as fuck, but it I was. liked it as a game. I, even as a kid, I liked it, but it was hard. But it, I, the art was really cool. It really spoke to me for some reason. So, anyway, those are my top five regular Nintendo games. I'm sure I missed something else in there, but it's my list. Let us know yours um, right on the podcast. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm-hmm. All right. I think it's time I play the last song, what which will be song? from me. Now, what? I. Almost accidentally played this last week with Soko on here. I hopped it up. I even I hopped it up. I talked about it. I might have cut some of it, but I was like, one of my favorite songs I made. All and then I was like, oh, it's on. Even, that's next week. I was looking at the wrong yeah, fucking list. Um, so that was kind of funny. Happened. But um, I try not to mention. And I said this last week again, but I apologize. You'll listen to me again. I try not to talk about race shit. It's like a thing. I try. I think it's cringy for people, white or black, to like talk about their race all the time in rap music. But I get it. I'm probably a minority in that thought process. But I just try myself not to bring it up. <laughs> but then I get this sample where this motherfucker says "white boy." Uh, it says, "You want to die tonight, white boy?" And I go, well, "I got to use that." <laughs> and so we use that. I have a Conway Twitty sample on the front about getting zooted or whatever the fuck he says, and. And I, this was really before I even got to, I just put all these samples in it. And I was like, well, I'm going to, I was really pushing the edge on the, like put in vocal samples into this beat. And then I was like, fuck it. I got to do this one myself. And then, um, I, there's also Joe Biden, a sample in the hook. In case y'all can hear that. And, um, Man. a lot of samples. Right. And so anyway, this is one of my favorite songs I made in a while. It's a solo song. So it probably won't perform well, but the true fans will know. And they'll listen to it out there. Cheers. So anyway, White Boy uh, by me, A the Mo. Check it out. White Boy Mo. Fuck White Boy Rick. Hey. Now, I'll take a drink. You know, over now and I'll have a drink. 
And I will, uh, I will mogul a red. I'll do some too. Now, I'll, I'll do a little too. You know, if somebody give it to me, I offer it to me. I mean, you know, you just, I just see yourself for life. Yeah. Uh, I keep touching myself. I'm just a user, I got nothing to sell. Face it, we don't know ourselves. Got us caved in like hell in a cell. Trying to break free, getting stoned in my glass house. Hit my wife free, then I ask her, put that ass out. Maybe she can milk me like a cash cow. Then pull the grass out, take a hit of three, then pass out. Do anything for the serotonin. It's apparent that I'm stoned, so they know that Aaron holding. Dro odor whenever I rolled in. And the flow so hot that you think it's stolen. I'm just chosen. I keep choosing to keep on doing everything that I've been doing. Trying to be what they hate to be. Say fuck you tastefully. Still alive amazingly, even though they say to me. Uh, talking gibberish, I don't care whose bitches is I tell her open up, hold up, whoa Just consider it, I'ma take a hit of this Wait, have I smoked enough? I guess no Never mow, forever stoned, you know how it fucking goes Chill as fuck, I've been stuck, I've been froze Hitting on sticks like we trucking hoes The way I lick and slit, yeah, I know I'm fucking so If you hating, just at me, actually my damn badly Pain pills mixed with edibles and some addies I got it back on me like a golf caddy I read the greens, burn the trees, eat the pink urgently Love it not, just a courtesy Mo lick the curly, certainly get up in it like surgery Guess they never heard of me, tryna to die tonight Trying to suffocate and pussy, no I verbally Uh, white boy, white boy, yeah, trucking these hoes. I dig it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. I didn't. I didn't even ask you to mention that line. And I, that was the one line I was going to talk it, about. Man, I love it. Is that? It's such a specific video game reference <laughs> that you had to like play Madden in the PlayStation 2 era <laughs> to even get the line that I say hits yeah. hidden sticks like we're trucking hoes because the hit stick is what you hit to do the truck move on Madden on the PlayStation 2. And we're hitting sticks as in like blunts. Right. Oh, it's so good. I, get you, man. I think the line's so good. So I'm glad you caught it. Yeah. I'm with you on it. <laughs> Good old shit. So anyway, um, listen to it honestly. I think the sample should have been louder. My vocal should have been lower. But you know, it's already uploaded, so we'll see what happens. But I can fuck with it before an album if it comes out on an album someday. Mm. Um, you know, we're still working on the music. Uh, I might put out grilled cheese uh, as a single next mm. off of the group uh, project, and uh, that's feature Soko and Brad. So that's I think today actually I need to figure out that mix and get that uploaded to the stores so it's ready. For people to stream and listen to us talk about eating pussy, Brad, yeah. you know Brad stepped up to my world, if you will, and then he yeah. did such a good job, and Soko did so good. I was like, all right, I'm gonna do a verse too, because y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all killed it. We all eating pussy around here, exactly. What the fuck? <laughs> I have some oh, so, oh, I think I unplugged our Man, LED lights. I was like, did that break everything? <laughs> but it's also recording. We're good. It was a close call though. Um, I actually, all my shit's connected to this APC. People don't know what an APC is. Uh, and I, it's actually a brand. I don't think it's actually the device name, but AP, what mine, we call it, it's a battery backup. So everything you okay. plug into it has like a battery, like okay. up an hour of charge into it. And so at my job, there's certain places you want that because if there's power surges, you it's yeah. just such a pain if something gets turned yeah, off. Once, that Once they go out there, they that annoying noise too. Like, yeah. Eh, yeah. When it goes, like, oh my God. I have mine on muted, but the first, because I had this for months, right before we ever lost power in the middle of the night. We lost power in the middle of the night. I think about it. Wake up at three in the morning to like, Beep. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you know, it's like, is apocalypse happening? 
speaking of man we're getting flashes over and everything um so anyway, i recommend an apc for anyone's computer so right. my shit goes out my computer never turns off um i want to get one and put it where our air conditioning unit's plugged like, into how much are those like 200 bucks like 100 bucks okay. or so uh i mean because if you get those actually good battery backups they'll warranty your shit Right, for sure. Well, and surge protectors aren't shit. Yeah. Right. Now they will too. If you get a good surge protector, my parents lost a refrigerator and a TV, and they got the surge protector. Company. But my mom is my mom, and she's stuck on the phone with them for a while. They're out to yeah. like stick with it. But that's uh, pretty. Cool. Another thing my mom told me about yesterday: the liquor stores, uh, Walmart, trying to get into selling liquor. Right, and so my parents, of course, are against this because they own a liquor store, mm. and uh, some of their evidence they're trying to take against Walmart is right now they sell their wine under what even what you're not legal you have to like there's rules i guess the way how you sell alcohol mm -hmm. like you have to buy at a certain price and you have to mark it up a certain percentage and if you don't you get fined the walmart just takes the fines because they can afford it yes, yeah, and they're yeah. under cutting all the people and i'm like yeah that is some horse shit so well, it's like, save us money though when buying right. those alcoholics though you want to go buy that shit <laughs> while you shopping at walmart <laughs> yeah but what happens that? is you shut down those liquor stores someday and then when you're an alcohol 20 years from now walmart's <laughs> charging you way more because they monopolized it well see I, they played the long game know, on you like how bad walmart and shit is but like we can't get in to get the city to overturn anything like all the people our four city council members all make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year or yeah. more well, like all fucks. this has been exposed in the last few months and we're they just been going after that parody page that came out with the city of agent yeah i joined like, it it lasted like four days and nah, got shut down i guess bummer. oh it was great yeah People tagging stabs at the city of Ada, finally. Speaking of, you just mentioned that page around me. I need to look up. There, everyone knows there's some new social media companies popping up, trying to be like the next thing. And now they probably never will. But I should really be on there making fucking the podcast pages and all these new social media sites. Yeah. But I'm just lazy as fuck. So I'm saying it now. So when I listen to this a week and a half from now, I'll be like, God damn it, get on it. All right. So anyway, <laughs> if y'all know any social media sites that we need to be on, you let us know. We're going to jump on it. Uh... Also, shout out Good Pods. You know, I don't think we're still being sponsored or promoted, but we were for a while. So y'all can listen to us at Good Pods podcast player if you want. Yeah. And if you make an account, you can share us and rate our episodes and it shares us some big old feed and it's somehow helpful for us. So, um, what's it called? Good Pods is the app or. Okay. Yeah, and it's like a, yeah. a podcast page, and you can find us. And so, like, Graveyard made a bunch of accounts and liked all of our shit. Um, got us up to number 22 overall podcast on their app because of graveyard alone number two music podcast uh that's where we were last week i don't think we are anymore but uh shout out everyone involved with that you Hell know yeah i appreciate y'all so hopefully yeah, we yeah, can yeah, yeah. keep it going and you know what what we're gonna do here we're gonna play out a shout out from our homie uh playboy who we referenced earlier and then we'll end on a beat and shit so anyway no. anything before we're we're out of here <laughs> no. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Let's see how was your yeah? How was your trip today, no, Skinny? It's, it's, all worked great, man. It's great. Yeah, I have to find a good picture to use for you on this episode. I guess I don't know if oh, any of the others. Time uh, the shirtless one kind of looks like you're tripping, so that could work out. Oh, no, he seemed pretty calm today. Compared, me and Skinny have had some. Uh, got, got well, pretty but he doesn't over the years. He doesn't like, have a calm picture. So for anyone that's not the pictures, I have to see them all from Facebook, <laughs> and so I like I see them now. And so when Skinny <laughs> off, he's smiling all of them, but yeah. he doesn't have one where he's just calm. I mean, maybe he has calm but his calm face looks like he's having a good time mug shots okay yeah. exactly <laughs> <trying to bug. laughs> yeah, well, i don't smile and i'll start smiling because i'm you know usually pretty hammered and, right. <laughs> fun. yeah it's hard for me to smile on command so that's <laughs> very <laughs> like if yeah if i have to do like a photo i'll look fucking stupid but if someone catches me off guard i'll be like oh i guess i look Okay, but like I cannot smile. It's the old friends episode with Chandler. He's like, hey, you got some good wedding, like in your wedding photos, we're all just chilling and stuff, and like it's been regular. You see your smiles come out in the places, like hell yeah, this gets you at your natural stages. Oh, I got my lawnmower back, by the way. <laughs> uh, got this back two days ago. Um, so that was a. It took. We we talked about him te texting around the, the episode. That episode came out. And I still didn't have the mower back. <laughs> and so I was like, motherfucker. And then I kept texting him. And then he brought it over finally. And then I, I mowed in the evening real quick. And, you know, mow the whole yard. It is fixed. He souped it up a little bit, though, to where, like, it's, like, a little too, runs a little too hot. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know enough about this shit, you know. But he was like, you need to clean it. He was like, it all this so much gunk. It knocked the fucking belt off that did your shit. And I was like, oh, all right. That makes sense. And he told me I need new blades by next year and a new belt. I was like, okay. And then... uh 
but yeah, it worked really well, but uh, I couldn't like full throttle the front wheel thing or it would go like, I'd have to run to keep up with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he did to it. He like <laughs> he took the motherfucker up though. Hey, That's what it is. It's probably the way it's supposed to work. And then the, whenever I turned it off, it would like would backfire. It's on a uh, gunshot. <laughs> I'm like, God damn this thing. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> run high. But it didn't, it didn't take more gas than normal. You got the job done. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's like, I gotta run with it. Thing. But I had to hold the thing like th- this because I couldn't, yeah. <laughs> couldn't close the shit. <laughs> close the gap there. That's so. That ass, man. Anyway, appreciate y'all making it here. We'll do another good one in a couple weeks. Show. Next week, I, I've hit up two, our two other normals, usual people, and neither one has even read my message. So yeah, we'll I, see. I ran into Dom the last time. Like I seen him. I was talking to him for a second. Oh, hell yeah. Well, I might have to just <laughs> hit up Powell to get his phone number um, to see. But anyway, next week, we'll see who'll be here. Mr. Might just be me and Skinny again. Maybe we'll just trip together on one whole episode. Hey, but we got, we got That might be more of a bonus right show than a normal <laughs> show episode, I guess, thinking about it. Um, but we'll yeah, see. But- and then I'm sure Sam will be here in a couple weeks. Uh, any news on your food truck ideas? Um, there was a possible backer, but I don't have a business plan. I've never wrote a business plan. I went as far as making a menu for like a pizza truck and shit like that. Come up with some goofy names, but you know, they're just kind of raunchy being funny. Right. Um, but I kind of went a different direction. I took some teacher interviews and, uh, we'll see how that goes. Like the food truck is not out. It's just, I got to get out of where I'm at now and get into something else. And then right. maybe I can save and work on for sure. once yeah. I get, figure out what I'm doing and then work on something else on the side. So the plan, cause uh, you know, you know, living in Oklahoma being, you know, us style guys, you got to have a little side hustle. So yeah, so, basically. Um, yeah. I don't mind God cooking a little right. food on a weekend. Or maybe even try to get it on the umpire, man. The motherfucker's making 75 to $150. As long tonight. as you can take parents screaming at you. Bro, I'll huh. turn around and be like, you're out of here. I have no issue. Zero. You start kicking everybody out. I yeah. will. That's the way to do it, Absolutely. I guess. Of course, I mean, I'm a, I'm a bigger dude, too, so I mean, in park a lot. Cool. Cool beans. Hell I mean, yeah. Let's go. Cool Billy Backyard Bro. Cool you want to do it afterwards? Bro. I'll be in the park a lot. Go Billy wrestling. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, you win, but you ain't gonna fucking enjoy it. Nah, them parents <laughs> calm down real quick. You yell at the parents. I'm, I'm chill parents I'm all the time. You. My little ass. I'm gonna talk. I mean, they start talking shit. I'm gonna turn around and start talking See, shit were, back. Were you and Melissa the top that got kicked out of games when Trinity was playing? I've yeah. been kicked out of more ball games. <laughs> going all the way back. I had to a feeling. Be, going all the way back to being a player. I mean, I got. Kicked out of two games because I broke a kid's ribs because I I was the I always had DH runners because I was the catcher and they had and then they left me on base and had me steal. Right. Well, I got from about me to you and I fucking went head first and they said I did it intentionally. I cracked the dude's ribs, got kicked out. Then kicked out of several more games for with this and that. Then always when, hate it when Trinity played baseball, we got police escorted out of Lexington. <laughs> Hell yeah. The whole team because their teams couldn't take beat you to the Lex and Big Lex Their jail. teams couldn't beat our team. And we had a badass pitcher. I mean, she probably was pitching like three grade levels above. Guess who she's playing for now? The Sooners winning now. Uh <laughs> fuck, I don't know what she's done. But anyways. And they couldn't matter. They tried to say she was crow hopping. So I started taking videos of the other teams and I went up to the umpire. I'm like, every other team fucking got their foot off her mind off the mound which is crow hopping our pitcher does not and i have video evidence i said i also have video evidence of you running the whole complex coaching this team standing out there telling the umpires what to do so they gave us third place trophy because they couldn't beat us as police escorted us out we turned them in they got in trouble so hell yeah how always they said his not, mom got kicked out of a lot of games i just look like a, <laughs> i just look like a dumb redneck i mean i'm pretty smart you know Street smarts. I, I'm gonna get your ass. He can He might not be able to write that business plan, but he'll <laughs> nah, get you. Man, it. it ain't hard. I saw a baseball player recently that's making some sort of headlines because he does this weird drags his back foot and then he ends up pitching from like almost out of the circle. And then people are like trying to say it's a balk or whatever, but it's like technically by the rules. It just he has this crazy fucking pitching form where during it he like slides. He yeah. just thrusts his body four feet forward. But as long as his toe stays down on the dirt and doesn't come up, you can do it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, baseball's going to get crazy. Actually, it looks more complicated than actually doing it like you're supposed to. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like he is working harder to do that than. 
It's, it's his natural thing for him. And if it was I think he's trying to cheat because it, it's it says it gains it's like the equivalent of his ninety two mile an hour fastball that much closer is like makes it like hundred and twenty mile because he's that he gets so many feet oh, closer that he's yeah. throwing like the makes. But know, if his you. foot is still on the rubber oh, when, no, when no. he when he starts forward and then it scoots and never leaves the ground, right? Therefore, it is still by law attached to the rubber. But it, mean, his arms do like this weird thing. Yeah. It looks like he's trying to. Uh, it looks like a pump fake. Like in bat, like it looks like he's trying to trick you and like he uh-huh. pitch like I don't know. It looked awkward, but the whole time I was like, hell, I mean, I don't even my team. As a batter, yeah. like them people that get real down sideways and throw all them sidearms. Yeah, stuff, submarine they pitches. Really yeah. sideways. Motherfuckers are hard to hit. Yeah, submarine pitcher was. You come across some of those when you're a kid. You're like, motherfucker. Well, because you gotta fucking time them and see how long it's gonna take to get their wind up because it's longer than the other guy releasing the ball. Right. So they gonna fuck with you. Man, baseball used to be so cool. I hopefully it comes back. I don't. I haven't paid attention. Man, but. It's looking fun, like bro. They got some players out there looking doing some nasty shit and all these slides. Well, they they, they sped up. There's like a pitch count, right? or like you have to so many seconds before you have to pitch again yeah, or something. So I know some they sped up. Looking fun. They got some new players and shit out there fucking circling, doing it, like in almost in field in in the in in the ring fucking well, home runs and shit. I did get kicked out of one more event in Paul's Valley. Some parent was talking shit, and the umpire looked over and started talking shit to my mom. And she didn't say a word. Of course, you know me. I ain't letting that shit go on. And so he'd turn his back, and I'd start mouthing shit. He'd turn around and look. He knew it was me, but couldn't prove it. Right. I'd pester him all fucking game, and I got thrown out for two weeks. Yeah. If I even showed up at the ballpark, it was automatic full, uh, <laughs> uh, for, uh, forfeit. They had and then I went to complain. And then the I went to complain. This dude was the umpire, the board of directors, the owner. And the <laughs> there wasn't no getting nowhere. Like this dude controls everything. Yeah, that's fine. It's a good time. Uh, all right. Well, man, make cash play baseball. I want to hear some baseball stories. You know, <laughs> you can back out there. I'd rather umpire and throw the parents out. That's yeah, not, that's, that's sounds, true. That sounds that's amazing. A, those are fun stories too. For Sounds sure. amazing. Well, hopefully by next yeah, baseball season. Right? I mean, I'm gonna get into it, man. Hell yeah. Well, yeah, you got to. I know you're gonna do it. That shit for sure. I can see it now for sure. <laughs> Doing that. Oh, shit. I made the wrong call. Stirrack. <laughs> oh. I'm getting an extra one. No, I didn't even, there wasn't a big play. On parent, you get a strike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They start talking shit. Just turn around, parents. Strike. <laughs> That's a decent name for this episode. We'll wrap that down. <laughs> All right, uh, peace, fellas. Peace. peace. Yo, what up? This Playboy, Gray Yard Entertainment representative. We rocking with a podcast with Mo. That's a podcast I rock with. If you ain't listening to him, who else you listen to? Salute. Podcast with Mo.
Alamo makes beats. 